Hello everyone, we're live with Halo Infinite, and I'm here with other people this time. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't yeah. tell this week has been exhausting. <laughs> well, um, start, I'll start inviting people now, um, if, as long as my game actually works. If you want to join, just add me on Xbox, my gamertag is in the bottom left corner of your screen, just add me, shoot me a message, and I will invite you, and then we'll play the video game. We'll probably maybe run... Are you okay with running some yapping until we have a few more people in? I'm fine with anything. Okay, cool. I want to like Halo Infinite again. I want you to, to convince me that it's not the worst game in the franchise. I want you to, Reason want you to sit Halo me down. Reason Halo Infinite is not the worst. Look how cool my Spartan looks. <laughs> okay, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. Counterpoint. I said so. All right. I, I can't argue <laughs> with that. <laughs> it's an invulnerable opinion. You see the new diamond skins are coming out? Yeah. Uh, well, the the sidekit one isn't new, um, but then you've got the Chaos Emerald weapon charm and then the uh, the commando one. <laughs> um, well, I made like a whole video where I was speaking about which items I think are going to be future Twitch drops, and so far I've guessed every single one right. In fact, I was recording that video talking about how I think the Primal Glory armor coating, which was originally named Grassroots, is going to be an upcoming Twitch drop. As I was recording it, they announced it as an upcoming Twitch drop. Wow. I mean, so so uh, far. Regular old Nostradamus over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so far I've uh, I've I've nailed every single one. Uh, I've like been correct every time. That's actually impressive. I mean, they're, they're pretty See, like easy like to that. predict, but like <laughs> it's still cool either way. Yeah, I'm kind of like that, except on the opposite. Every time, every time I predict something, I'm always wrong. <laughs> So anytime you need to like place your bets on something, ask for my opinion, and you'll know to bet against me. One hundred percent. I'm gonna start <laughs> predicting that Halo Infinite will be a good game. <laughs> oh wait a minute. <laughs> wait, the reverse psychology. The is implications here. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure. I can't take it. Oh wow, that, so, that was uh, a lot of messages all at the same time. Is anyone anyone turning up for Pepsi Squad? Oh, we usually do Grey Gang over here. Grey gang, you do yeah, the so defaults. We, we rock could uh, cadet grey because it's the it's the one that I know. I mean, everyone does have the Pepsi one, but everyone's done Pepsi gang. Like you know, that's been done. But grey okay. gang, that's like that's our thing. No, that's what's in. Okay, then I'm. Last, we call it the default. The other, the other week it was from. it was grunt gang. We all rocked the uh, the yapping coating, but uh, usually it's grey gang. You should go completely like default. Like you get the the enlisted visor. You get the the cavalino helmet. Like, you need to be generic with the <laughs> one emblem. I I'm feel doing like that I, right now. Because, because, someone gave me this, uh, because someone gave me the Deathly Poison coating, I feel like I have to use it for a little bit now. <laughs> it's my, I mean, it's my it. favorite one of the game, but someone gave it to me, so it was like, oh, I, someone messaged me saying, I'm a Pepsi. You're already in the game, right? Was luck. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you got, Pepsi? Yeah, I mean, you can either use, you, to be fair, because the Mark 5B has Cadet Grey as well, so people like, can use that too. Oh, that's actually kind of good. Uh, Halo Five, Halo Four were bad. That's not true. That's that's just an um, outtake. That's an Halo outtake. Five, Halo Four, mm, Halo Four was mid, not bad, but Halo Five, ha it was really good in some areas and then really poor in others. And the, I think yeah, you know I mean I, for the most part it was just the story. <laughs> the story sucked, but I thought everything else was pretty solid with Five. It, well, art style, was... okay, art style, but. Art style, it was better than 4s, because at least they like made it look less like garbage, you know? Yeah. But uh, um, it definitely wasn't a perfect game. To be fair, I mean, it's like with the 4 and 5 art style, the, the problem is just down to the overall quantity, because there is a lot of like good sets of armor. I, in fact, as much as I don't like Locke, I like his helmet. His armor looks pretty cool. Well, not, not his chest piece. His chest piece kind of looks like he's wearing a bra. Um, but his, but his, helmet, <laughs> yeah. his helmet's pretty cool. And I like Chief's Gen 2 design. I just don't like how he got it. And I don't like it more than the... Halo, I mean, Halo Infinite Chief is just like... That's peak. That is peak Chief design. That is perhaps peak Chief. I think you're right on that. Um, but like, Either that or Halo 2. Yeah, Halo 2 is pretty solid too. Um, we're going to do a quick game of Yappening before the lobby <laughs> fills up. Because I do want to play at least one match of Yappening. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even finished the pass. I don't know if I should... Might as well over here. You might as well uh, fall into the uh, the FOMO trap. <laughs> the FOMO. I missed the Mark V Zeta, and that's the only helmet I've ever wanted you from this game. You missed the best I... helmet. <laughs> yep. 
and uh, I would have I would trade everything I've unlocked just for that helmet. Yeah, I, well, I I wouldn't be mad if they brought event cosmetics back to the shop. Uh, as long as they were priced fairly, because then it's like you know, sort of, if you unlock them in the at event, at least you well, have a second chance. Yeah, it's like yeah. if you if you got them in the event, well, well done, you unlock them for free. Those yeah. items shouldn't be exclusives; they shouldn't be tied to that two week no. period. So if they bring them back to the shop, not only does that then give three four three more stuff to put on the shop, uh, but as long as the price fairly, they probably sell pretty well because there's a lot of people that like never just like I've seen so many people say like, oh no, they brought out this event on the week I'm on holiday, so I'm missing out on these cosmetics. Uh, and it's like, well, people clearly are interested in them. You bring Mark V's Eta back for like 300 to 500 credits. And I guarantee you're going to see everyone in the lobby wearing Mark V's Eta. <laughs> I think they should do that after they bring it back for free one more time. I think there should be second chances because yeah. like I was really busy that week. I couldn't do it. The winter but... update would be the perfect time to bring back every season one event. Even if it was only for a week rather than two weeks, if they just sort of had like all the season one events come back during that, like, um, I, I would be fine with that. Like to be fair, how they could break it up as well. Bring your uh, bring the Tenrai event back for a week, then the uh, like tactical up stuff, then um, Tenrai again, and like sort of rotate it that way, and have the new events mixed good. in. Like for four months, if we basically had a different event on every month, even if some of those were old but events. Tenrai should be a different mode. Tenrai should definitely be a different mode. Yeah, it I, should be like Ninja Slayer. It shouldn't Slayer. be normal Fiesta. <laughs> oh, dude, I wanted to kill Ninja everyone. Slayer. Ninja Slayer would have been the perfect mode. Just grapple shot and uh, grapple shot and energy sword. That that would have been perfect. It's like perfect setup. And then Forge is out during that. That really would have been. I don't know why they made it Fiesta. Fiesta is the worst mode in this game. Yeah, like I don't, I don't mind Super uh, Fiesta. Like obviously, big team battle Fiesta is fun, but basic Fiesta is just. Ugh. Yeah, at least give us vehicles or maybe the weapon variants, but basic Fiesta makes me want to throw up. They uh, should give you random uh, equipment too. Did they already do that? I think that's already there. Yeah, yeah, that was that was right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, I haven't played it in so long. I forgot. <laughs> that was by choice. At least Mark V coming. Hope cross core helmets are coming soon. Yeah, I, I hope they come soon. Um, I don't think it's going to be that much longer. I do think we're going to see cross core coatings and or helmets during during or just after the winter update. They're either going to come with season three or they're going to come with the winter update. Um, I mean, there's so many people that are like, oh, well, 343 are clearly just not doing cross core now when there's been zero indication of them saying we've scrapped cross core. In fact, in the video where they were talking about the winter update, they literally said like, oh, uh, yeah, we're still working on like, you know, new customization stuff and uh, cross core and all that sort of crap. And people just, I guess, ignored that part. <laughs> so I, I don't know. If I they want to get a uh, goodwill back with the community, they definitely can't stop cross core and I doubt they will. Yeah, I, However, I, I, there'd be absolutely zero reason screen. for them to do that. Them cancelling split screen, despite their promise of it, was a bit of a shock, so I don't really know what I can trust anymore. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, to be fair, I think they're going to go back on that. Code. I think they are going to actually just be like, uh, yeah, you know what, that was a mistake on our behalf, we're going to do split screen. Yeah, I hope they do. I mean, you saw it working, we all saw it working. There's yeah, exactly. no reason for them to cancel it. I think that's just the saddest thing ever. But, uh... On the flip side, did you see me and some of the other Forge modders? I'm not a Forge modder. The six but some player of the campaign. Halo Infinite modders, we did eight player campaign. Yeah. We hopped in oh, yeah, network and broke yeah. in. <laughs> Granted, it crashed after a couple minutes, <laughs> but it might be possible if you run it on the dedicated co op flight. Oh, yeah. So, like, that just goes to show you that there's so many things that could be done. I don't know why they're doing not doing it. Like they have some cross core coatings done from what it looks like. Yeah, I know the default one for Rick Chasse and uh, Eagle Strike because they share the same coating. Uh, that one is supposed to be coming for the Reach Core and the Mark Seven, so that's like done. Uh, hey, Magpie just hopped on the live to say hello. How are you doing, man? Um, so yeah, going back to the the campaign thing though. Like, yeah, I mean. Just seeing that just makes me think like, how long are we gonna have to wait for firefight or PVE modes to actually arrive? Because that's the main time. reason people are bothered about co-op. Even like, uh, even if they've already played through the campaign, uh, even if they played through it multiple times, I know I'm just like, I just want a PVE mode that I can play with other people. Magpie Leon, why did you ignore my? Oh, okay, let me go back. Hey, Magpie Leon, what's your opinion on? Okay, 
Um, I'd rather, I'd rather, I, I can't answer that. I just cannot answer that. <laughs> By the way, uh, just checking. My mic uh, engine is bugging out. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah I can hear fine. Okay, perfect. It doesn't sound at all like echoey or weird. Uh, no, it might sound echoey on the stream, but that's because I have your audio playing through my monitor. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Oof. Okay, you can at least tell me on Discord. Okay. Yeah, I miss Firefight too. I would, uh, I mean, I really hope they bring it back and sort of blend together both normal Firefight and Warzone Firefight and give us. Um, like HVTs and stuff that you can fight in it. I still don't know why they removed it in Halo 4. Yeah, it's Spartan like, well, they, they removed it in... Po Spawn Ops was kind of like, it was basically Firefight, but with a story, except the problem was that, like, is why Spawn Ops isn't as, uh, is, isn't looked upon as, as, um, as well as Firefight, is down to the fact that it had sort of no customizability or whatever. Like, you didn't really have as much of a reason to go back to it as you did Firefight, because Firefight, you could change the settings and all that sort of stuff. Um, also, Halo 4's uh, campaign sandbox is pretty bad. Yeah. Between the lack of Covenant AI, the Prometheans were the worst addition to the campaign franchise, I could argue. Yeah, no, I, I would agree uh, with And the level design was pretty poor. I did not enjoy playing Halo 4's uh, campaign a second time. And I'm not trying to be negative, I'm just saying, like, Infinite and Halo 5 is a massive step up for the campaign design size. So I could see Spartan Ops working in these games. Yeah. But not so much in Halo 4. See, I, I, there's a lot of parts of Halo 4's campaign that I like. I'm not, I'm not gonna try and like sugarcoat it and say like, oh, it's actually so much better than people give it credit for. I understand why people, because uh, the AI is objectively worse, um, and some of the level design can be a bit tedious. But I do think a lot of it, the, it like has some really solid moments and definitely has some cool set pieces and the stuff. The vehicle sections. Yeah, the vehicle sections are always awesome. Um, I like the one thing I like about 343 is they're not stingy with vehicles. Yeah. You know, even in Halo Infinite, like, even though there's only one mission where you officially get a Scorpion or a power vehicle and you never officially get a Wasp, like, the open world provides that ability to where you could get it whenever you want. Yeah, which is, like, you know? really fun. It's, it's always, like, cool when you, like, there's a, you know, the mission where you've got to go to the four beam towers? I love that mission. That's my favorite one. Yeah, I, I, I thought that mission was, like, really cool. You it, 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 for, it forced you to explore the open world, which I really liked. Um, and... One thing the one part that I thought was really cool. So I know one of the beam towers, the one with the two wraiths. Depending which angle yeah. you approach that from, there's actually a scorpion near that area which you can use to fight the wraiths. But I didn't know that my first and second time playing it, and I was like, oh wait, if I knew this, this would have been so much easier. I actually didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's one thing that I love about. Uh, that's one thing that I really love about the open world on Infinite because I've I've played through it so many times, and even the other day when I was just exploring it, I was like, I've never seen these structures before. What are these? What happened here? <laughs> That's so disappointing, though, because it's really lacking. Like, imagine what this could have been if it had another year of development. Yeah, I know. Of proper development by, like, a good management team. We could have had an amazing open world, and that's what really... That's what hurts the most, you know? A bad game doesn't really bug people that much, but a disappointing game is the worst taste, you know? Yeah. Like, seriously, like, I enjoyed work walking around the open world myself for a good half hour, and I've been wanting an open world Halo since I was like 11. It, well, it just seemed you know? perfect for Halo, like really. Oh, uh, perfect. It, 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 the, exactly. Like, we really didn't need it. I don't understand why the emphasis wasn't there. Right, I should uh, read some people on chat because I don't want people thinking that I'm ignoring them. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. The only good sniper coating. Yeah, this, the the ultimate reward sniper coating. I can't. I, Abby Lime, I think it's called. I can't remember. But this this one's sick. Um, not going I'm to just shot it quickly. That's game night. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. You don't need to worry about not being able to get on. I wonder how the mark. Uh, is that, yeah, the mark. Don't six. look. Pardon? Don't look at the scoreboard. I just want you to believe that I'm at the top of it. Just don't look okay. at it. I won't look at it. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually really good at this game. I'm actually a pro. I'm like, like uh, garbage with snipers. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to shy away from that. My aim's terrible. Oh, okay. I just shot him through the drop shield. You know, I'll Luke, take that. Lucid's, Lucid's actually my dad, and he works for Microsoft. <laughs> uh, they should bring cut content as DLC. Well, cut content I would like to see as free DLC. <laughs> I'm with it. Um, 
I mean, to be fair, case. we know the winter the winter update, like most of the stuff with, if, that's coming with that is cut content that they're giving players for free. So it's like, you know, they're, they're basically already doing that, which uh, I, I think is pretty cool. Um, I'll join next game. Yeah, no problem, man. So how do we get down uh, with this? Or do we just queue up uh, at the same time? Oh, if you want to hop on, just message me on Xbox. My gaming text in the bottom left of your screen. Well, on, on the bottom left of the, uh, the screen for the stream. Um, oh, I actually didn't do too badly there. Uh... Yeah, I only got third to last on the leaderboard. That's pretty good. <laughs> we'll take that as a win. <laughs> I'll take that as a W. I uh, There was an attempt. A for effort. Well, challenges are almost fixed. I mean, the challenges are vastly better like at the minute than they were at launch, but that doesn't mean it's a good oh, system. they were awful. <laughs> they were so terrible. The moment it was like, kill someone with a sniper after they've just used a grav lift, it's like, what? <laughs> That's doable on like two maps. The worst ones were the killing spree ones because you'd load yeah. into a lobby and your team wouldn't even try to get kills. Yeah. That was so bad. Winter update release date in November. Don't remember November being winter. Well, I mean, November is a part of winter. <laughs> There's so many visors in this damn game. I need, like, yeah, a you, better UI. I need it better. Yeah, uh, the UI def Like, the cross-core visors, when they added that, made me realize, oh my god, this UI. Like, although I although I wanted it to be better anyway, it's like, it really makes you think, like, oh my god, they need to do so much more with this. <laughs> Yes, because there are so many visors. It's like you don't realize until cross core comes out. I'm dreading cross core coatings and having to having to scroll through. I'm already having a bad time. Like I'm just like swiping left to right. I'm like, why? No. <laughs> There's so many options. Although opulent bronze looks awesome and is probably a reference to opulent halo. Not nah, just joking, but uh, I mean, one can dream. But this opulent bronze coating, like, reminds me... Have you played FTL? What's FTL? Faster than Light? It's no, an indie I've... game where you play as a ship and you micromanage your crew. Well, oh, the, the bad guys in the game, the rebels, look just like the opulent bronze coating. Most of the so coatings think... tend to be references, which, to be fair, I do think is pretty cool. I don't know if it would be a reference to FTL, though. It's, it's probably one of the most successful indie games. It's, like, up there with Hollow Knight, but I wouldn't say it's, like, very big on pop culture although if you haven't played it you have to if you like sci-fi at all it's a really good game okay. it's a roguelite so it's really hard cheers Wiz. like i appreciate that oh roguelikes uh, ro roguelikes don't tend to be my genre to be fair which is probably why i've never heard of it they're brutal I would love to have wrist attachments on both wrists. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, sorry. I think I'm reading that wrong. <laughs> I would love to have attachments to both wrists or thighs. Now, thighs, that would be cool. The only reason there isn't on wrists is because you have your equipment on one of your arms. So that's why you don't have a wrist attachment on both. Even though we see um, Eklund in the cutscene, she has two. The reason the player doesn't is because we have the equipment. Um, and I guess it's probably like too much effort for 343 to figure out a way for the equipment to fit on top of the, uh, the West attachment. But to be fair, that probably looked like really goofy regardless, so I'm not mad about that. Helmets, though, we should be able to have like a helmet on the left, a helmet on the right, and then a helmet on top, or like on the front or whatever, and that would be cool. You know what I think we're really missing? I think we're really missing, uh, playable elites for sure. 100%. I wouldn't even play Playable as him. I just like I just I like the diversity. No, I'm not breaker. Yeah. I would most certainly play as uh I'd most certainly play as an elite. Like when I play Halo 2, I like looking like a goofy dinosaur. Because then when you kill them, you just look like Cause no like pros use the elites. So it's just funny going on a killing spree yeah, with them yeah. and you're just teabagging everyone. Which is your favorite armor core? Mine is Mark V. My Mark V armor hasn't changed since December. I like the Mark V. There isn't really an armor core that I think I dislike. I think my least favorite would probably be Eagle Strike, but that's not to say that I think it's bad. I think Eagle Strike is really cool. My favorite is... Yeah. Right now, my favorite is definitely the Mark VII, but that's just because it's the one with the most options. I gotta say, I'm kind of with you on that, but... For a different reason. I think Eagle Strike looks kind of obscure, but it's cool because it's like... That whole like fractured timeline thing, yeah. which honestly they really don't talk about that enough. Yeah, like, it's like a really I, it's, cool idea. It is such but a they cool don't talk concept. About. 
I, I would prefer that they did some more sort of... Obviously, fracture timelines are what-ifs anyway, but I'd prefer some, like, you know, almost like Marvel-style what-if scenarios, where it's like, it is just a version of the Halo universe with, like, a different twist. So, what yeah, if the Flood took over? What, what, what if the Flood won and it gives us a, a Flood armor core? What if the... the um, what if the foreigners defeated humanity in the ancient war or whatever, and then they could bring back the, uh, you know, the prefect armor from Halo 4? I think so. I the don't one really... that's, like, based off foreigner armor. Bring, like, some foreigner armor out as an armor core. Something like that would be cool. Um, like, although the current fracture stuff we've been getting is really cool, I would love to see some that are, like, actual just alternate takes on the, the, the established lore. And I'm fine with the new lore, of course. I just really think that every time 343 comes up with a good idea, they, they, don't do they, enough like, with it. <laughs> they whisper it. They whisper it. You know, yeah. they're like, what if we did like an alternate time? And it's like, what? Huh? Like, I didn't even know what it was. And I'm a huge Halo nerd. I mean, hell, I have the YouTube channel on it. Yeah. But I had to have, uh, I believe, I forget who told me what it was. I think it was Roadman who told me. But, uh, I mean, tell us this stuff. Give us like a little animation. For yeah. the new event give us a cartoon like a cgi cutscene taking place in some alternate universe that'd be so cool well, it's like and, with the uh, um so for yapping the to to sort of announce it they released that comic on twitter and stuff why couldn't they yeah. when when that come out in the game do a uh like basically get some voice actors to dub over that comic and have it play out in the game um, oh yeah we mentioned this, yeah I we were speaking about that the other day i think um like that that would be that would be pretty cool and then people would play it people would come on and they'd be like oh that that's kind of, that's kind of cool i actually really want to try that event it gives you a bit more of an incentive mm -hmm. that'd uh, be so cool they are messy in halo four or five elements like well they're missing a lot of halo armor not just from four and five but like i mean part of me isn't that upset because at the end of the day i don't want them to just keep re-releasing old armor i want new armor too i want like a good blend of both and in fairness 343 have been doing that pretty well um, I think, like, we have been getting some solid, like, reimaginations, uh, of, of classic armor. We've been getting some classic armor back anyway. Uh, and we've been getting some really solid new ones. Um, what if humans were part of the Covenant? Yeah, a Helios Skrull type course, something like that would be cool. I did a video about that a while ago, I think. Uh, I can't remember when. It, to be fair, it wasn't that long ago, but... Um, that be a cool one. Go on. For Fracture, what if the Covenant actually won? What if, like, yeah. the Chief failed and, uh, and, like, Reach fell... And everything. And I guess for some reason they don't set off the Halo rings, whatever. I don't know. You're going to have to neglect that because the Halo rings going off would be the Covenant's end goal, which would kill everyone. But uh, what if, like, humanity was fighting a guerrilla war and what was left of the Spartans was just, like, a splinter group and you get, like, these very, like, ragtag armor cores? I guess that's kind of like Rikshasa. Yeah, that's basically what like, give, is, it? But give us, like, a story behind it. Not, like, lone wolves, but, like, guerrilla fighters. Like, almost like survivors yeah you know and give us like a little animation where it's like maybe some spartans are like trying to do like a last ditch operation and they're like we got to take out this cruiser the covenant take earth you know i don't know well it's like I, I i don't even expect anything like massive in terms of animation it could just be like full of reach style animation it doesn't need to be anything super complex just something like some sort of cutscene for these fracture things would be sick uh, but instead we, sure. get a, we, instead, we get a choose-your-own-story on Waypoint. <laughs> and it's not even... Why do they put everything on Waypoint? It's like anything they don't have confidence in, they put it on a website. It's like, 343, yeah. three, you gotta be bold. You gotta be daring. You know? Most... That's like, what we like 90% of the players for this game are never gonna know about that because it's on Waypoint. <laughs> I didn't even know about it, too. I saw the Twitter post, and I was like, what is this, just an image of a cosmetic? I thought it was a video, and I got bamboozled. I was very confused. There wasn't even voice acting or music. It was just a still image. Yeah. It was really weird, honestly. It confused me, if anything. What uh, armor coatings need to be updated? What 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 exactly do you mean by like updated? I I agree they need to make changes to them, but I don't know where to the extent which you're referring to. Do you think this game or in the next game will have playable elites? I think Infinite will have playable elites eventually. They're focusing on spawns right now, but uh, if if and obviously, right now, it seems like there's a big if. If they plan on sticking with this game for 10 years, and they have this 10-year plan, I can definitely see playable elites being a part of that plan somewhere down the line, because they're not going to just do Spartans for 10 years. In fact, it's possible we'd even see playable brutes. 
I think that is 100% possible. That'd be really cool. That that'd, be like a, that'd be like Republic Commando, where you could yeah. play as the Trade Notions. It doesn't That'd even cool. need to be like, you know, for the regular multiplayer, let, let's say they just bring back Invasion and for Invasion only, but like Invasion could have a bunch of different variants as well. You can only play as Elites and Brutes on Invasion. If that was the case, obviously you'd still have some people that'd be a little bit annoyed about it, but I think that would be a good compromise. If you had Elites and Brutes were both playable on the, uh, on the Banish team on Invasion and Spartans on the, obviously the UNSC side, that would be really cool. And, like, they could do it where they, they bring back the, the classes for Invasion. And if you're playing as an Elite or a Brute, you have different types of weapons and stuff. Um, I, th I think that that could be really interesting. I don't know if we'd ever see playable Prometheans. It's something that I would have liked in during, like, Halo 5. Uh, like, I mean, it's a sol uh, Promethean Soldier seemed like something that could be, it would be quite customizable and pretty fun to play as. But uh, I don't know if that would ever happen. But I definitely see playable Elites coming back uh, at 2 Infinite at some point down the line. They'll probably do a season centered around it, like they did with MCC. I mean, oh, I'm this pretty... is incredibly cursed. You should see what I'm doing here. Yeah, where are you? I'm using my mouse for shooting, aiming, and looking, and I'm using my left stick. And that sounds horrible. And uh, and my <laughs> paddle button to jump. This is so cursed. Um, I wonder if cross core would work with elites and no, <laughs> they simply just like are built different. I mean, we already have some brute armor technically on Rick Shatter, but like not to that extent. Playable Moa from Reach, that'd be awesome. But yeah, like if if they brought back Invasion, I would love it to sort of be something a bit like a overrun from Gears of War Judgment, where you have one team that playing as the humans, and then the other team get it was like it was like a bit like Beast Mode as well, where you can just play as all these different versions of the Locusts. If they did something like that, like uh, they bring back Invasion and you can play as Hunters and Grunts and Jackals, that would be amazing. Right, uh, well, let's 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 actually go into some customs now. If, if anyone else is in chat and wants to join, shoot me a message and I'll start inviting people. Shoot me a message now and I'll start inviting people. I know we've already got a few in, like... Playable Flood Spiders. The, the flood infection forms. Dude, that'd be great. So one time when I went on stream, and you gotta do this yourself, something, you don't have to do Pepsi Squad, but we got the entire lobby to wear the Pepsi uniform. We had the whole stream be one big party. Yeah, usually, <laughs> it was the um, most glory. Yeah, we usually do that with Cadet Grey. We had like a full squad of people that were all just using the, the default Grey. It was pretty funny. <laughs> I wonder what the enemy team thought, because typically gray will either mean someone who's really bad or someone who's really good. That's I think that's that's probably why I, I did that as well, because it was like that's the noob color, that's the default color that it makes everyone. Yeah. I had so many people that were like, so "Oh, start. we should do purple gang and use the OPI coating instead and stuff like that." And I was like, clearly you're misunderstanding the point that I'm trying to use a coating that everyone has. <laughs> yeah. Um. Playable sergeant Johnson core. Uh. But yeah, last week we did the yapping where we just had everyone like sort of using the same armor and everyone was um, using citron white. Uh, well, I say every, I say last week it lasted one match because after one game there was already like fourteen or fifteen people in the lobby, so we couldn't play big team battle anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, we've had we've had to do customs before. Customs is the best though. Yeah, like, yeah. I'd sacrifice big team for customs any day. Master Cheeks Gang, what does that even mean? <laughs> it means Master Cheeks Gang. You've never been in Master Cheeks Gang? Master Cheeks Gang. We just like take off our, um, we just expose our bare asses. Yeah, there's just no ass plates. Imagine an armor core without helmets. Nah, the helmets are better. An armor core without helmets? Yeah, that'd be weird. That sounds horrible. Doesn't, it doesn't need be. It doesn't even need to be a core. That could just be an option to take off your helmet. But I, I don't want that. Oh, I thought it meant. I thought what they meant by the comment was like, if there's only one option for a helmet. I was like, that's the worst thing ever. <laughs> no, no, he means like you take your helmet off. Master cheeks. Oh yeah, I know. I know you're referring to the TV show. But like, what would that imply in game? You can't play as the TV show version of Chief in the game. You can't even oh, play Jimmy as the video Rings? game version of Chief in the game, but. He's called Jimmy Rings. Yeah, exactly. 
Well, I mean, he's also Master Chief, so Jimmy Rings is the best. They should make a new Halo game where both the TV show Master Chief and the video game Master Chief team up. It'll be like um, it'll be like a Spider-Man No Way Home, <laughs> but with Master Chief. Yeah. We'll kill off the TV show one. In fact, in fact, make them fight and just show how much better the video game one is. <laughs> yeah, it could be like Master Chiefs. You mind telling me what y'all are doing on that ship? And they're both just like, sir. <laughs> saying it the same man i will i would no, i would pay to Chief see would that. Turn around and be like i can't save you from what's coming next <laughs> oh yeah oh man brilliantly done good job hollywood and then he didn't play and then he'd do something really naughty to a woman <laughs> oh no halo the multiverse of chiefs halo it's Legends gonna be like better. <laughs> they gotta like assassinate some prophet. It's like, all right, your task is to assassinate prophet Mercy or whatever. And they're like, okay. Can you just start and having then Jack... sex with him. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, no. It, get, it gets better. It's gonna be so. Game Master Chief's like, all right, where do we take him out? And like Lord Hood is like, no, she. And then Jimmy Rings is like, oh, she. <laughs> and just and from then on, he's working against the mission. <laughs> There's my opening. What a crazy concept that would be having the video game chief, TV show chief, and then you'd have like Mac World Chief and uh, Halo Legends Chief and Minecraft Chief. <laughs> you have Minecraft Chief. It's just like like they're all it's in just, trouble. It's just like that one episode of Loki. <laughs> the ground under them breaks and a pickaxe comes through, and you see <laughs> Minecraft Chief go like ooh. <laughs> Oh man, I would pay to see that. Mega Bloks Chief rolls in too. An armor core with modern day military uniforms made in Spartan style. That kind of just sounds like what the Reach core is, honestly. That's kind of what they went for with Reach's art style. But that'd be cool to have like the modern BDU camo patterns yeah. that armies use, maybe like the digital camo. Full That's Guys Chief. Oh, I love Full Guys Chief. I, I don't really play Fall Guys that much. <laughs> they did the Halo collab, and I brought all three of the Halo skins, played the game for like a week, and haven't touched it since. Don't forget about uh, Fortnite Chief. Fortnite Chief's based. Yeah. I, I love Fortnite. <laughs> it's not even like a joke. I think it's a really good game. It's a fun game. I agree. What skin are we rocking with? Oh, you can, well, for custom games, you can use whatever. It's fine. No, you don't need me. I mean, just yeah, just do whatever you want. Um, right, we'll probably start with something. Uh, I don't know what to start with. I wish I had this one mode still, but because of customs are broken, it deleted it. It was oh, amazing. It was like one? it made the game into CS:GO. I made it by uh, I made it like Counter Strike. Everyone has commandos and sidekicks, oh, yeah. and you you can only jump a little. You can't sprint, and two headshots is a kill. I made something and then similar really to that. Long yeah. response. It's actually a lot of fun. What what was your version? Um, it was kind of just like the same movement mechanics, but everyone had the commando because it's like a very tactical looking weapon or tactical sounding weapon. It's, it's just that. <laughs> well, it's basically just swap, but the movement was what his. <laughs> That sounds like Counter Strike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we made it two shot headshots, so it wasn't. It, it would be more like CS:GO, where you gotta like hit them twice, depending on what weapon. Although with the AK and Counter Strike, it's a one shot headshot. So I mean, it's it's kind of like the game, but not really. Also, a mode we played the other week. It was just basically Doom. Everyone just had the uh, the bulldog and move really quickly. <laughs> I think we should uh, we should do that. Was free for all. We should do that. That'd be fun. And my only, my only thing is like with not being able to save modes properly. I know there's ways you can work around it, but like I hate going through the settings every time. Uh, what, what, what would the best secondary be if? We're, uh, in fact, I think the heat wave would work if we're just using the bulldog and the heat wave. I think that works. It's probably bottomless clip though because it's it's doom so. <laughs> bottomless clip, but not infinite ammo. This is gonna be horrible. <laughs> is that a thing? Can you do that? Yeah. 
that's horrifying because so i mean that's that's like doom. doom you don't have to yeah you like yeah. uh but there'll be I'm, i i know you can get weapons in doom but we'll turn off weapon pickups um i'm with it i'm liking the sound of this mode i would leave power weapons on but if someone gets the spanker that's it it's game over for everyone <laughs> it's not fun anymore after that point <laughs> Um, I don't know if you mentioned it earlier, but we gotta start with uh, Bulldog is at least one of the weapons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got Bulldog and Heatwave. They're the weapons. Um, we'll turn vehicles off because I don't want someone... I don't know what map we're going to go on yet, but I don't want someone just grabbing a wasp or something. Can I join <laughs> or is it too late? No, you can join. Uh, just shoot me a message on Xbox. Um... Yeah, shoot, shoot me a message on Xbox and I'll buy you. Sorry, brain turned off on me for a second there. Where's Slide? I should turn Slide off as well. Oh, yeah. We're playing Doom, not, not Halo. Um, can you turn Sliding off? You can Am I being stupid? I feel like I'm being stupid. Sprinting, sprint speed scaler, hand sprint, slide speed scaler. Um, okay. Sprint off, though. Yeah, we've changed sprint off, yeah. Oh, that automatically turns off. Like, then. Doom, could, Doom could work since it's both Microsoft. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks, Hayden. <laughs> uh, someone just messaged me telling me I suck. It's like, well, that's not new information. I suck at Halo, guys. It's not like I tell myself that every stream. <laughs> uh, okay, what map? Um, we did Deadlock when we did this move last time. I'm just worried about it being too big. Uh, we'll do fragmentation. Why not? Is there anyone else joining before we start this mode, or are we good I to think go? We got in lobby. Pardon? How many we got in lobby? Thirteen. That's a good amount. Okay, we'll we'll start this one now. I mean, to be fair, if anyone wants to join, I'm pretty sure you can like just I, I can just invite him in game anyway. Oh, you got to disable shield regen. There should just be a health, and you just run out. I'd be yeah. cursed, but it'd be like yeah. doom. Oh, wait there. No, don't do this today. That's cool. Custom games aren't starting. Custom games aren't starting. Uh, my account name's in the bottom left corner. It's just Magpilo. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, is Infinite Breaking too? Dude, Opulent Halo can't play campaign anymore. What? It just won't let him. He's in the flight version of the game and it stopped working. That's so weird. This game is just breaking around us. It did this the other week. It wouldn't let me play custom games. Oh, no. I'm going to have to reboot my game and hope that fixes it. Take me party lead. Maybe that'll yeah, work. Yeah, well, I'll make you party leader. Uh, you can try starting and then if not, I'm going to have to keep you party leader. Then you can join me. Or I can join you and you make me leader again. Um, and then hopefully. Fix your game, Bungie. <laughs> Going on fragmentation? Yeah. Okay. Alright, we got the settings. Ooh, Heatwave Bulldog on fragment. This is going to be cursed. <laughs> Spyro All and right. Crash could work in Infinite since Microsoft owns Activision. How would it's Spyro working. and Crash no, work in this not. game? Yeah, I'm gonna restart broken. my game. I'm gonna restart my game. My I gotta restart it too. Son. I have no idea how big yeah. this one is. Dude, what if they just bricked customs forever? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Oh, everyone's got free joint. I love this video game. Yeah. You already know my opinions on it. <laughs> Okay, 
Worst case scenario, what I'll have to do is just play Big Team Battle. <laughs> let me just try a custom game on my own first. Just let me try and boot stop before I start buying people. How and when did you get play MCC. We could, but it, like, it's whether or not everyone has an MCC installed, and obviously Infinite's free, so it's more accessible into. We'll do MCC. I'm gonna do a, uh, or we'll do Infinite. I'm gonna do an MCC okay. stream probably Sunday. Yeah. Oh wait, that's tomorrow. If you want, you can hop in for that. That'd be cool. How big is the moon? I know. I just know it's smaller than if. Oh yeah, I'll definitely hop on if you need an MCC tomorrow, or through the week. I should be free pretty much all week. I have apparently got it booped off work, so that's the only reason I'm streaming tonight because I'm apparently off tomorrow. Oh nice. I love unexpected holidays. Okay, custom games seem to be working on my end, so hopefully, once we get everyone back in. Halo Infinite, more like Halo Break for it, uh, Break for it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, oh yeah, so definitely Halo Poison. Infinite I got it last stream. Someone uh, someone sent it to me, it was based. It was really based and epic. Then a spare um, code and they were like, here you go. And I was like, oh my god, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I got the best coating in the game! Right, we know Cerulean's on. Um, right. I've got to hope we can get everyone back in. You've already rejoined anyway, haven't you? Halo should switch to Unreal. Nah, I don't think you should switch to Unreal. Like, I, I really don't think you should switch to Unreal. Yes, the, the engine... that I'm not saying that the engine they are currently working off is the better option, necessarily. I just feel like... Uh, the the Slip Space slash Bam, uh, Blam engine has a lot of charm to it, which I you wouldn't have in Unreal. Yes, Unreal is the better engine. Uh, like... It is, <laughs> but what's better, Gladiator's Edge sidekick or this? Oh, I, this month's Game Pass Ultimate sidekick is probably my favorite one. It's probably my favorite I like sidekick the, coating. I see. My opinion differs from yours. I like the Halo CE Magnum. No, no, it means coatings. I still like the Halo CE Magnum. I I like the Halo <laughs> CE Magnum. Yeah. It was just um, it was asking which coating I prefer on the sidekick. Definitely the diamond one for me. Yeah, I, I prefer the game pass the new game pass ultimate one over the diamond one. I I was using the adrenal monster one before that oh. was like my go to, oh. but the new game pass ultimate one's like it's so cool. That's a hot take right there. I uh, I did you I, make that uh, a poll? The make diamond one's kind of eh. Okay, all right, pal. <laughs> so bad. You know be just eh. How dare your opinion differ from mine? Bro, watch, just get everyone back in now, and then custom games break again. It might be me. I hope it's not me. I think 343 caught on to the whole eight-man campaign thing, and they're trying to punish me. <laughs> oh, no, I've got to re-edit the entire mode! That's... Before I do that... Before I do that, we'll just try a different mode first. We'll just try something basic. We'll play. Uh, who, who wants to play Last Spartan Standing, my least favorite mode ever in all of Halo? I'm down. I hate this mode so much. I don't know if I'm down. I've said it, but I don't know if I actually want to do this. I hate this mode. Why do you hate it so much? It's a bad mode. <laughs> it's just bad. No, I, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that I really don't like about it. I don't like how it tries to be like a battle royale, but also gun game, but also like. The maps just aren't designed for it, but also the weapon choices are really off. Um, yeah, I don't even know why they made them on the first place, to be honest. It Sorry seems like such a good choice. Pardon it's me. just, I feel like every mode they've added to this game has been an absolute confusion. Attrition is cool. Like, attrition's cool. I like attrition. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. Gears of War. <laughs> just play Gears of War. It's Wait, pretty sick. I I accidentally joined a party with someone. What the hell? <laughs> when did that happen? Uh, right. Have I reinvited everyone now? I think I have. I, th I think I have. 
Um, yeah, if, if you are after joining and you're not already in, shoot me a message on Xbox and I will invite you. Again, gamer tags in the bottom left corner. I should, I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger so it's uh, but if people to see I'm moving the wrong one. Well, no, I do actually need to. Sometimes I hate streamlabs. Hey, Chief, subscribing. Uh, Foxy Boy, thank you. Let me make the, the, the game attack a little bit bigger. That looks really off. Good job, Leon. That just looks so bad. <laughs> I don't worry about it, Fauna. Uh, Leon, help. I drank too much booze. Now I don't feel too good. Um, drink less booze. Uh, Consume bread. Consume bread. Did someone else just messaged me. Or was that a... When will the ranking video come out? Uh, it, pff, probably early October. Uh, that's when I'm hoping to get it out. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna start the game and hope that it works. Not on Break Air. I will change the map. <laughs> uh, not, I mean, not on Behemoth. I actually think Behemoth would be more enjoyable than Break Air. What if we had 14 players on Aquarius on Last Spartan Standing? Oh, dude, we need to do that right now. This is going to be the worst thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't let half the players spawn in. Oh, they will. It's going to look horrible, though. It will work, though. I can't wait for two people to spawn in the same spot. Please, please, work, game. Why? Is it not working? It's not starting. I don't know if this hey, is me... because of someone in the lobby. I'm going to hop out the lobby. Yeah, it could be because uh, it could be that whole, like, not allowed to play, like, custom... Creations. I'm gonna leave. Let me see if that does it. This isn't custom right. creation though, so making someone else leader doesn't fix it. Yeah, it's. How much you wanna? Okay, give it a shot. I, I left. To see if that works. Yeah, it's not working. I don't know if someone in the oh. lobby just like. I'm starting to wonder if they just broke it. No, because it worked just when I was on my own. I don't. This is stupid as hell. Changing the amount of plays. We did all this last time this happened. It doesn't help. It literally does nothing. I am speechless. Uh, I am trying so hard to hold back so many insults for Halo Infinite. We just, I'm just going to throw uh, attrition on a sec. Okay. Is, is it just no modes are working? Is, is, that, is that the case? No, it's not because there's too many players. We did it with 18 the other day. Okay, yeah, it just seems like... Customs are just... I think customs are just broken. It's gotta be... I, I want to say it's because someone in the lobby... Like, I don't know, maybe the game isn't updated. Maybe someone's on PC and they don't have an updated version of the game. But I don't like that it's not telling me why it won't start. The game has to update before you play. You can't just roll in like that. Yeah, that's that. true. Um... And I just left the lobby, so like... It, I, I mod my game a lot and mess with it, but it, it seems to not be my fault. I don't think it's the map. No, I've played on, like, tiny maps. Oh, wait, okay. Like Breaker, capture the flag is working. So maybe it was the map. Maybe I uh, think it doesn't work. Oh, no, we're about to play Arena CTF on Breaker. Oh, this is going to be awful. Wait, so it is the map? So they, they stop? Maybe Aquarius they... <laughs> just doesn't work? Why would they stop it? Oh, well, unless... I used to love playing Aquarius with 18 people. It it might. I, I don't know what the problem is. At, at least at least we can play the video game in some capacity. That's some very positive thinking. I right can't there. see why it'd be like you being in the lobby, why it wasn't working though, Cerulean. I love how in typical number company fashion, it doesn't tell you why it doesn't work. It just expects it just you to know. It doesn't work. It's like, why? I wonder if this is why it's taking so long to fix the game. Maybe they had no bug reporting or, like, exception catching or handling. So, like, anytime an error happens, the game just breaks. 
Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Spesh, I didn't want to actually play, play Breaker. This is my least favourite Halo map ever. <laughs> this is apparently the only thing that wants to work. We're playing Arena CTF, by the way. Alright, boys, let's Arena some CTFs. There's still going to be people that are playing the match to get really confused when they can't cap the flag. The double ears is cursed. Oh, the, like the bunny ears, cat ears. The combo meal. It's so cursed. Oh yeah, Kerberos is sick. Like, Kerberos is actually such a good helmet. I actually was planning, I was planning a whole machinima, uh, either yesterday or today. Well, does it work? And I was like, okay, what if it's like a World War II inspired machinima? And one team is like, obviously based off a certain, a certain group during World War II. Uh, and they all have the Kerberos helmet and stuff, but like the, their their leader has like a slightly different, uh, has like slightly different armor or a different coat or whatever. I think like a machinima inspired by World War Two. Um, oh, that'd be cool stuff. And then the British have the Tommy helmet. Yeah, with the that would be awesome. Maybe where the 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 heroes are using pretty much every other helmet because obviously I'm gonna have to get some people as like background actors, and not everyone's gonna have the exact same helmet. Oh yeah, especially considering only two of them were free. Plus, they're pretty expensive cosmetics, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, well, there's five, or is this, I think, no, there's six helmets for that core. Two of them were free, compared to Yori, which had four helmets, three of which were free. Um, I, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> that was unfortunate. I made the jump, but I was crouched by accident. Because I hit my paddle instead of jumping. Oh yeah, CTF on this map does not work. I just want to say the map design uh, yeah, is it, impossible. Breaker sucks. The only mode I like playing on Breaker, or can tolerate playing on Breaker, I should say, is um, Stockpile. Yeah, I'd agree. Honestly, all of Inf Infinite's BTV maps are really bad, like design-wise. Like, they're just too much of a straight line, and they're too cluttered to where playing any objective mode is just really hard. Demon Prime just donated twelve dollars and fifty cents. Thank you, I appreciate that. Let's go. Thank you. Yeah, no, I hate Breaker. I really hate Breaker. Yeah, this map is kind of doo doo water. I was so excited. I for used it. to like it. No, when when it was like first announced, I was really excited for it because I was like, oh my god, finally a map that is actually designed around vehicle combat. Then I realized, oh wait, no, it isn't. It's just a straight line with a ramp in the middle. It's just a bad map. I was, like, I was like, oh no, it's just bad. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I thought it'd be bigger. They said it's like the biggest map yet, and I expected something great. Yeah, it does not feel like it's the biggest one. It just feels like a big arena map rather than a big team battle map. That's my problem with it. It just it feels like a big arena map. The BTB Honestly, maps have three infinite. lanes as checkpoints. That's not necessarily... Um, I think 343 needs to get rid of their old map designers, and they need to get some new ones. Yeah, I then we could have a brilliant game. I feel like uh, a lot of so like the loot caves on fragmentation are such a cool concept, and that's why I like fragmentation. I think is like a, a really enjoyable map because of the because it does some unique stuff. And I was like, I, when we played the the flight, I was like, I can't wait to see what the loot caves look like on other maps. Well, that was unfortunate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see that the problem with this game is it doesn't have any flavor. If you think about it, like everything they try. They do only like once and they don't go all in. Yeah. You know, like there's not an arena map with a gravity lifter man cannon that I can remember. You um, know, and that's one of the coolest parts is the physics of Halo. Uh, can you, Behemoth do you does have of... thingies, but that's it. What is? Behemoth has them, That's but that's it as far yeah, as but... arena Oh, and Cat does Catalyst? Actually, I mean, no, Catalyst ranked. doesn't. Yeah, yeah, there's like. In the ranked modes, there's no like man cannons. Yeah. There's no open spaces. It's all just wall floor. You know, it's it's just bland. And I want the man cannons. I want the loot caves. You know, I don't know why. It's like three four three. Get creative. You know. Yeah. Do something new. Just stopping by, Rekus. But yeah, no, I agree with saying, with what you're saying. Um. So I really, uh, I really hope the next two. Not, not the Forge maps they're releasing with the Winter Update. I hope the next two big maps with Season 3. I mean, the Arena one sounds a lot more interesting because that does have a uh, a, grav, a, a grav lift or a man cannon that I think it's supposed to shoot you across the entire map. A bit like that one from Halo 3. Is it Narrows? 
Valhalla and oh Narrows, yeah. See, Narrows is amazing like that. because it's a straight line, but you can skip to either side yeah. using the gravity lifts. Yeah, it sounds so like it's it gonna be some sort of spiritual monotis. successor to Narrows, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but the uh, I mean, I don't really care as much for Arena, but the Big Team Battle Map is apparently going to be the biggest one, and it's gonna have like actual vehicle spawns at the base, like the Scorpion and uh, flying vehicles and stuff. So it sounds like it's gonna be really good. Um, okay, some guy come over with a warthog to bring me over to the enemy flag, and now he just drove off. Why, C-Stack? Why? <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of saw that. That was depressing. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm hyped for the new big team battle map. I just hope it doesn't let me down again like Breaker did. But obviously, we don't get that until March. Which is why I can't wait for Forge. I, I don't know if they've actually said if they're going to put community made made forge maps into matchmaking because they kind of need to <laughs> if, if this game is going to last from from the winter update to season three they need to put community maps into matchmaking you know what they also have to do as soon as the winter update drops forge needs to arrive like they've already delayed it enough yeah if, if they get go, delayed again that's oh gonna sorry be like... yeah it's not at launch it's actually in the last week of the winter update that's going to be the death of halo infinite like that's dead gone like, obviously, the, I mean, they delayed it so they could do a big update. So it's like, oh, we've got co op and Forge coming at the same time, guys. Isn't that so cool? Which, like. But that was supposed to come, like, this month in yeah. September. Yeah. It's so sad, man. It makes me just, like, really. See, my, my thing is, though, like, with season three, which uh, I guess I'm, like, the only person in the, the universe that I guess was looking at it this way. Everyone obviously wanted the game to sort of have the soft relaunch. And obviously, I mean, season three basically is that. Not to the scale that most people wanted, which is why a lot of people are disappointed. But season three is supposed to be that relaunch. That's when uh, 343 have apparently got their schedule together. It's when they finally got their act together. I mean, the winter update is basically season 2.5. And then um, season three is that like sort of soft relaunch. Because going forward, content's going to be much more frequent. And uh, updates and bug fixes and all that sort of stuff should be much more frequent. They've got a new head of live service now. And he... He know he clearly knows what he's doing. Even if his take he about does. even even if his take about Halo like always being competitive, even if that was a bit of a weird take, for the most part that was he, the worst take I've ever yeah, heard. Uh, for for the most part, it seems like as far as running a live service game goes, it seems like he's got some idea of where he wants to take Halo, Halo Infinite. It seems like he, he has some idea on what he want where he thinks this game should be, and I like I appreciate that. It seems like they they have someone that actually has a vision which the game was was needing. Uh, but no one has sort of looked at it from that perspective, which, again, I, I get it. You know, everyone's disappointed about the news, so it's like, you know, people aren't going to look at it from that way. They're just going to see what they're disappointed in. Um, you know what I just realized, actually, now that you bring up the head of live service? Go on. Did they have one beforehand? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just know so they had not I think they did. That's a problem. I think they did, but I think he know. left like a couple months in. Or his contract w yeah, ran out a couple months in. Yeah, which is why, like, you know, really everything was sort of all over the place. But now they have someone in charge of live service. That's what actually gives me a little bit more faith. But no one's like, no one's really mentions that. Like, everyone will sort of go on about, like, oh, well, knowing 343's track record, they're just going to delay it again. Which, again, I get why people say that. I'm not, I, like, I'm not really defending 343 uh, when I'm saying this. But the, the reason I still have, you know, a bit of hopium is because there's someone new, there's, there's new people in charge. We're finally getting those changes in management that people have been asking for. Like, th there's been so many things where fans have asked for and then 343 has followed through, even if it's a bit later than they should have. But then everyone will be like, well, knowing 343's track record, I mean, someone mentioned that the, uh, this is, this is a little bit unrelated, but like someone mentioned to me the other day on Twitter, they were like, oh, um... Knowing 343, the campaign DLC are just going to be tacked on little extras. And I was like, well, we haven't really got any sort of uh, uh, evidence to support that claim. <laughs> uh, and he was like, well, the Spawn Ops DLC. And I was like, if anything, the Spawn Ops DLC was, were regarded as being better than the, the base game levels. I thought that the DLC Spawn Ops levels were way better. So if anything, that just goes against his point. Um, but that's what I mean. It's like, it just feels like even when 343 do something that is a good thing or, or um, if they are like actually clearly trying to make improvements, people don't acknowledge it because they just hate the company. 
Oh, honestly, though, I don't think... I think those claims do have weight. Yeah, sure, no. they did deliver, but compare it to every other company that makes successful AAA games, they deliver on time. Yeah, almost yeah. Almost every time. Bungie has delivered a solid game every time. Um, 343 has done nothing in the past years but disappoint. That's the thing. They announced that they fixed custom games. It's still broken. You can't save them. They're yeah. still bugged out. They announced they haven't said anything about desync. Like, that's the problem, though. Sure, there's nothing to back up the claim of... I get what you're saying. They've never made DLC recently that disappointed. But yeah, the fact yeah. that that was the company 10 years ago also has another cloud of confusion. We yeah. have no way to tell, but that's the same 343. Like, for all we know, they are totally different and aren't capable of it anymore. We don't know. But yeah. uh, with the way they're creating content and missing every single deadline and saying every target is subject to change, like, those arguments hold weight. Yeah, like, no, like... Looks... The company is one thing, but cutting out all of the anger and bias, the company is pretty poor at delivering on time. 100%. Uh, like I say, I, I, 100, I, I fully understand why people, uh, why people are disappointed and why people will say stuff like that. But I feel like even if 343 do sort of improve, which at the minute that they, they are, um, like, people just sort of... I'm just gonna hate them regardless. Um, like even if they, if they do sort of make make the changes that people want and they start adding the features that that people want, there's still gonna be like a, a pretty loud group of people that no matter what are just gonna hate them because they're not Bungie. <laughs> like I feel like that's just something that's always gonna happen. Um, yeah. Well, to be fair, their community managers didn't do a good job of blaming the fans as well. Yeah. Oh, like that's it, the thing is when you it's when you give a bad. Yeah, when you give when you give yourself a bad name, people aren't gonna forget it. You know, if you insult the fans, they're not gonna forget it. You know, I don't think hating the company and just trying to want the game to die is a good thing yeah. unless you want to see a future installment be good. But uh, I mean, this company has done nothing but frustrate fans for 10 years and then gaslight them and insult them. And I don't really think that's... I think it's fair to dislike the company. Yeah. You know. But now that management's changed, maybe things will change. You know. Who knows? I'm hoping. I hope for change, but... Um, I thought the game was going to be dead, but now that we have news of shakeups and new leadership, it seems like there might be hope. You the know. happening's also apparently done pretty good for its numbers, too. Yeah, Which is, uh, which is good to hear. Um, Halo still isn't close to mainstream, but at least there's that. Yeah. Like, I think I think Infinite was sort of... Um, when, it, when it released, it was kind of close to those mainstream numbers. Like, I feel, it feels like everyone was talking about it. Even, like, non-Halo fans were talking about it. Everyone was talking about Halo. Um, Everybody. It was mainstream. It beat yeah. all the other shooters... And then proceeded to uh, not deliver for months, so it died. Yeah. In the mainstream conscious. The game ain't dead, but it's uh, it's in a really willful state. But maybe it can come back. Maybe it can come back. I, uh, I still 100% hold on to faith that I think that they, they will have a redemption arc at some point. I think, you know, you see, we, we've seen it with Cyberpunk. We've seen it with... Um, I'm trying to think of other games that we've seen it with. I know we've seen it with other games. <laughs> uh, but... CD Projekt Red has made successful. Yeah, that's beforehand. that's obviously the argument with them. It's like, oh well, they Inf haven't failed before. Whereas three four three really hasn't made a a well known mainstream product ever in its life. It was built to make Halo. Yeah, and it hasn't. It's arguable if they succeeded um, financially. I guess they've done okay, but they have done a really good job of not protecting the franchise and making it mainstream. Yeah. So like. I mean, maybe there could be a comeback. They're there's always, no evidence that it could happen, but there's no evidence that it won't happen. They're always especially trying to, with the news. They're always trying to like go for this broader audience, and they fail every single time. <laughs> That's well, the thing: is you don't apply to a broader audience. What you applied, what what you appeal to, is the audience that you gonna, have. Like the, the, that, that yeah. should be their like and their the priority. And the of it will come. Yeah, and the thing about I think three four three's former leadership is clueless, and I think. I mean, that's true. I mean, I don't even need facts on that. We can see how they've handled past installments. Yeah. You know? By doing everything the fans didn't want and not doing what the fans wanted. But, again, let's see if that changes. I'm, I'm with it.
I'd love to see a change. It's, it, I mean, it's like, I, I want them. I want them to bring this game back. I want them to sort of redeem it because, I, like, it is insane that it's. It seems like there's a lot of people that just that just want Infinite to fail. They just want the, it to, them to scrap the game and make a new one. But I don't want to have to wait another six years for another Halo game. I want Infinite to get better and to be the game that I originally wanted it to be. I don't want to have to wait another six years for three four three to try and get it right. I want them to make this game right and make it the Halo game that it should be. Um, I only worry, though, is is it too late? Like, is the engine too scuffed for a modern game? Is it too dated? Is it too broken? Like, imagine... What if this game never can be fixed because of the engine limitations? I I just... I feel like they, they could realistically have people that work on the engine. I mean, if you look at uh, Fortnite, I know that it's obviously made by Epic, the people that make Unreal. They transition that game from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5. If 343 basically completely sort of reinvent the, the slip space engine, or, well, I guess it is technically still Blam, if they sort of reinvent it, um, and... and make it where it's not so limiting then eventually to be able to improve on a lot of the things that they can't improve on right now because of the engine limitations like there's there's sure. people in the industry that have proven that that is a possibility yes i love how sudden death on breaker is just we actually nice. have the flag i don't know why we're not capping it because it's arena so we have your flag <laughs> we have your flag. You have ours. Do. We can't cap. Neither team can cap until the <laughs> until we get the uh, until this we return is awful. the flag. All right, time to go stealth mission. Um. Oh, another thing. When talking to some of the modders, some of them informed me that Chris Lee, the director who left very early on in Halo Infinite's building yeah. cycle, yeah, might be responsible, not entirely, but leadership wise, responsible. Oh. For the reason Halo Infinite's so bugged. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, he was telling everyone that the game was ready for launch. And, it and then they showed it off in 2020, and it really wasn't. Oh. And Chris Lee seemed to just be like, yeah, it's ready, it's ready, it's ready. And then he ended up quitting. Uh, maybe he didn't actually quit. My theory, there's a crackpot theory. It's the same thing as the whole CEOs don't quit theory, you know? Not really a theory, but like, it's just a talking point, really. Yeah is that maybe after the 2020 demo, it was so bad that Chris Lee was let go because they, said, they were like, you said it was ready and it's anything but, you know? I assumed he was let go anyway, to be fair. That was, like, I just assumed yeah. that was the case down to like how poorly received that original reveal was. Oh, oh, are we going to win? What the hell? That was so well timed. That was that was a that was a rough match. Or turned off like just in time. Yeah, you know, Faz. I originally thought the commander was going to be a new DMR. Well, it kind of is. I thought it was going to be more like an AK where you can spray it, but you don't have. Like, I thought it was just going to be like a beefy assault rifle. Yeah. That was a nightmare. Okay, I'm hoping that breaker has been fixed on customs basically when breaker come out if you pl if you played any mode like normal free-for-all on breaker you wouldn't be able to respawn wouldn't i don't know if it's been fixed uh you, you just couldn't respawn i don't oh, know why yeah. that's pretty weird magpie today is my birthday bro well happy birthday tanner have you have you had a, a, a good birthday <laughs> I really hope the game works this time. That would be really cool. Okay. Let's try let's try and actually make this mode. The doom mode. The the doom mode, yeah. With the uh, okay. I think that's that's everything there. 
Uh, we'll, we'll try that. It's not my birthday, Knowles. Don't start this again. People are saying it's her birthday now. It's happened so many times. It's, it's one of my mates. He'll come into the chat. He'll just start saying happy birthday. I'll say it's not my birthday. Then everyone on chat believes him and thinks it is my birthday. Okay. Maybe this mode isn't working. <laughs> Um, okay, let's let's try on a different map. Maybe it's the mode. <laughs> Please work. We have two bulldogs. Oh wait. Well, that shouldn't be the case. What the hell? I tried it on Breaker, just it wouldn't work on Breaker. I'll go to the other big team battle maps in a sec. Okay, let's try Deadlock. Okay. Let's try High Power. Like to ask, but Customs says different. I don't know what you mean. Um... Um, okay. Maybe it's the mode then. Cerulean, um, I'm going to have to ask you to leave a sec. We'll just have to see if it works then, and then we'll know. I don't think it's because of you being in the lobby, but... If it is because of you, we'll really have to sort of look into why it would do that. Because I don't understand how you being in the lobby would make the game not work. Okay. I guess it's you being in the lobby. I don't know why. I really don't understand why you being in the lobby makes it not work. What, what platform are you playing on? At least we can play the video game now. You play on Xbox One. Um, I don't. Yeah, that shouldn't really be an issue. Yeah, the only thing I can think is like, you're in a timeout. You've been banned from the game. Can you sing Barbie Girl Birthday Edition? No. <laughs> Someone needs to just play the Doom theme now. Oh, I, I, was, I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't meant to put infinite ammo on because you're supposed to pick ammo up in Doom, but I forgore. You forgore. I forgore. I like this mode so far. This is fun. Infinite needs stuff like this, man. It just needs loads of modes like this. And these aren't hard to make, Infinite. Yeah. I, I don't understand. Maybe their menus are just so bugged that they... The more modes you put into the menus, it weighs down the entire performance of the servers. I don't know. That's why I find it so weird that they didn't just make Fiesta Super Fiesta, like, for the Tenrai events, like, when everyone was asking for it. Because everyone just made it in custom games. It was as simple as enabling weapon pads. I have a strong feeling that 343... I don't know. I don't know. They <laughs> they, they blow my mind. They blow my mind, dude. I also I don't have a strong feeling that 343... <laughs> They, they, I just don't get it. I don't get how they can just repeat the same stupidity. Yeah, it it's, amazes it's so me. Weird. Like I'm not a hater. It's plain to see. Fans want one thing. We don't get it. Why not? <laughs> Every time. You I know, it's why, funny. Um, I got like Forge got played. The modder's broken and played it anyway. It's like, <laughs> all right, they'll find their own way, I guess. I get with um, like with playlists being taken out. I, I get that because of like the game's population. Who just started playing Sneaky Snitch? 
Kevin McLeod. Get out, Noel! <laughs> He just come in here to play sneaky snitch. <laughs> this is, dude. The bass boost on my headphones makes this sound bussin'. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even gonna turn it off though. What's the other? What's the other good one? I, I just like two that are like really iconic. Of uh, royalty free songs. Yeah, uh, there's yeah, time yeah. By, by the same guy. By the same guy. Uh, it's time another. to party. Bam, 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 bam. You know that one, time to party. I don't know uh, if that's what I'm on about. I love Sneaky Snitch. The other day I made my brother listen to it five times in a row in the kitchen. <laughs> that's evil. <laughs> You're a monster. Such a banger though. Sneaky Snitch did not need to go this hard. <laughs> yeah, any anyway, as I was saying, because I think I ended up changing the topic because Sneaky Snitch started playing. Uh, <laughs> um I get why they take out playlists because, of, like, obviously the population and stuff. Like, they took out last one standing because no one was playing it. Um, uh, well, that's because it's a bad mode. Um, and like the taking out land grab, which again is another win for me because that's also not a good mode. I mean, they're bringing it back for, for, for entrenched, but um, two modes they added a season two. They already they've removed. taken out both the new modes. <laughs> L take three, four, three. Oh, what do the fans want? Infection, invasion, big team fiesta. Nah, let's give him, how let's about give we make him, a uh, shit let's battle give royale him, mode? Yeah, uh, and, and king of the hill, but worse. Land grab more like oh. L grab. It's, it's almost surprising that they're even like amazed. They're like, it's like somehow our last Spartan standing did not succeed. It's like, dude, we literally told you what, 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 what you know, yeah, it would like, be a better look is if when they remove one playlist, they replace it with a new one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, that's kind of what they're doing. It's just not with a new mode. It's like they're getting rid of land grab, but leaving the yapping playlist in. Oh. So, you know, we, we take some, we, we lose some. Uh, like when they added, uh, to be fair, when they got rid of last spot and standing, they added doubles. That's when doubles came out. Um, so they are adding different playlists when they remove one. Uh, it's just funny that the ones they've removed are the brand new modes. Like, the main selling point. I don't get season. why they don't, they don't use the universe for the seasons. They just come up with some new, like, generic Lone Wolves thing. Make <laughs> season two, like, the, the Sanghelio season. Yeah. It's got, like, elite AI, new, like, Covenant, like, banished weapon skins and Covenant stuff to unlock. Like, that'd be sick. You know, you can make the ghost purple if you wanted, you know? Yeah, the fact that we still can't customize Banish stuff yet is insane. Instead, we got some nameless Spartans that no one cares about. They didn't even try to make us care about wolf. them. They didn't even yeah. try. I mean, like, Eklund is such a nothing character. Din has a cool design, though, so I'm intrigued to find out more about him in Season 3, because I know that's where they're going. Um, in the wild, you are your own wild. It's like, thanks, 343. <laughs> All I can think is because I'm pretty sure Joe Staten wrote the, the Season 2 stuff. But at the time, he hadn't been at 343 that long. So I'm assuming Season 2 story aspects were kind of rushed. Which might also be another reason that Season 3 was delayed, because they want to actually improve on the story. And if that's the case, fair enough. If Season 3 actually has a solid narrative, then fair enough. I won't even be mad. If they make Din an interesting character and do some cool stuff with the story. I mean, considering the armor core that season is the spy core, which is like, you know, it's a classic one that they bring. Well, it's classic armor from the books and stuff. It's not actually classic armor from the games, but they're doing stuff like that. Uh, so that that's cool. That's cool. Um, uh, I just I just hope they actually go somewhere with a narrative, somewhere meaningful. Because right now, the, the season two narrative, it was just, it was like, Good job playing last spot standing, but sometimes you've got to you got to fight with a team. <laughs> it's like okay, I know. I can't fight with the team because my friends don't play this game anymore. I Thanks three four three. I can't fight with my team because you keep making the event single player modes. Absolute genius. Last spot standing is just a terrible event, and it was the event twice. It's so bad. It's I think so they terrible. really desperately wanted to be Apex. They were like, with this mode, 
we're gonna beat apex legends in the battle royale market and then they launched it and it just floundered so hard they were like okay i got a new plan how about we give the fans what they want <laughs> it's insane if they if they made a good battle pass um well if not good battle pass if they made a good battle royale then it would actually be a good thing but if you're gonna make a garbage battle royale knockoff then yeah people aren't going to like it <laughs> Mm-hmm. It, like mm-hmm. it didn't feel like a it, it wasn't even a bad battle royale it was just a bad battle royale knockoff it's like when you go to Denny's and you want pancakes get ready for the weirdest metaphor and instead they bring out just a hash brown and you go I want pancakes and they say oh that looks like pancakes <laughs> but it tastes nothing like it it's like I wanted I wanted a pancake I wanted syrup butter and they're like well you asked for something that looks like it right this looks close. <laughs> you know, it's like, really? Hope you enjoyed that. Just crap. No, no, I, I, I understood that. that. That made sense for the most part, so. <laughs> to, to give a more reasonable, logical way to say it, if you're going to do something, you have to go all the way. Yeah. Uh, that the, It goes the same with 343 and how they tell the stories of the fracture event. They go halfway with everything. You, you gotta, you gotta... Not just dip your toes in the pool. You got to go full dive. Yeah. If you want to really, co- you got to commit, because when you don't commit to anything, your game doesn't have any story to tell or anything interesting. Yeah, you know? exactly. And that's why Forge needs to be here so bad. <laughs> nah, I can't wait for Forge. It's, it's gonna be such a game changer, man. Mhm. Uh, right. In fact, this this map this mode works kind of well on a uh, launch site, even though we've got like way too many people to play launch site. But that's the best part. Mm-hmm. My mate just DM me and said, "Can you put a cowboy hat on and go yeehaw? It will be funny." Unfortunately, I don't own a cowboy hat. Oh. Uh, let me catch one chat real quick. Magpie, do you like my cursed spawn? Which one? Uh, which one are you? Sorry, uh, is your right? I'm assuming someone. Oh, that's kind of cursed. You got the the quill hawk and the bunny ears. I like it though. It's cursed, but I like it. What's the need for last spawn standing? They're already making a battle royale. Exactly. It, like, if they already have a battle royale planned, they, they, last spawn standing seems like such a pointless mode. I feel like that was the beta for it. <laughs> I feel like you could dedicate those resources elsewhere. Well, I, yeah, it's like, it clearly could have been some sort of test. Like, okay, uh, we'll test if people like the idea of a battle royale and Halo with last spawn standing. But then last spawn standing wasn't a battle royale. It was just bad. <laughs> I think they were. I think it was as simple as this. They were just trying to make sure that they could make a circle in Halo Infinite and make it work. Forge won't have that much of an impact until the custom game browser comes season three. Well, well I mean that's partially true. Um, as far as yeah. population goes, yeah, it. more people are gonna play when custom game browser comes. But at the same time, it's gonna have such an impact on people that like you know want to make their own maps and uh, people that. Like, just play it casually with the friends. Because I'm pretty sure file share is kind of oh already my. in the game. So, um... No, I mean, Forge is going to make a really big impact for this game regardless for, for both. It's, it's just going to make a second impact when a custom game browser comes out. I hope it doesn't end up being, like, no impact because they missed time. If, if, yeah, if that ends up being the case and it doesn't even, like, bring any players back, then uh, that'll be concerning. Granted, it's like everyone only looks at the Steam numbers. I mean, that's because they're the only ones you can look at. That's the only place you've got concrete evidence. Um, but, I mean, it, it is clear that most of the game's population is on Xbox. And then you've also got a fraction that are on the, uh, the like, Windows Xbox launch... launch uh, the Xbox launch here on PC. I don't understand why I struggle to say that so much. But, like, you know, Steam is not the only place to play this game. <laughs> Which what I think... What would you say? It's a tenth of the players? Is that our actual, like, statistic we got? Pardon? It is, 
Is Steam players being a tenth of the overall players in actual statistic we have? It was at launch. Because at launch, we had over 20 million and Steam was 270,000. So at launch, Steam was 10%. But I don't know. I, I think Steam is less than 10% now because most people that played on Steam either obviously stopped playing or I know there was a lot of people that moved to Xbox due to performance issues or some people moved to the Xbox launcher because of performance issues. Um, so I, although Steam was 10% at launch, I don't think that number is still accurate. And I think, because, again, because of the performance issues, a lot of people stopped playing on Steam but that doesn't mean that everyone stopped playing on Xbox or um, on other like sort of ways of playing. Um, yeah, I heard differently. I heard that Xbox performance was actually worse than Steam. When I'd be live streaming, people would be like, how do you get your game to look like that? And they'd be like, you think I complain about PC frames? And they'd be like, you have no idea. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've, I've literally... I, I'm not trying to say like those bugs don't exist. I've not had so, like that many issues when it comes to performance. Um, it's like, I know my, uh, my uncle, he was telling me like when he played through the campaign, his save file was deleted like three times. The game just kind of deleted his save file. Uh, well, well, he didn't delete it three times, but it deleted his save file. I've never had that issue. I've never, well, I've never even had anything close to that. And he said he was like having issues where he'd like sort of fall through the floor and stuff. I never had anything like that. And I've played through the campaign six times. Um, still, I think 343 needs to prioritize PC play as well. If they want to even yeah. crack into the mainstream market. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, so like, like they need to re-add the red reticle. That needs to be yeah. step one. Yeah. The fact that they removed that is unforgivable. I know it sounds small, but like they it is a massive to thing, though. I like I didn't realize how much I don't like the red red reticle not being there until I watched people play it on PC, and I was like, what the hell? It's hard, man. It's hard. You just get a disadvantage. It's like why three four three? Are you trying to just ruin the game for everyone? But you know, uh, it, it's frustrating, man. Like it's like they don't want me to, they don't want me to play this game. Yeah. It's like that's what they're telling me. They're like, oh, you're on a computer. Sorry, we're not looking for a wide. They must have cheap collection instead, man. <laughs> I, I'm actually like mad. Like I'm tired of this game being yeah. bad. Like, no, no one wants. It. Well, okay. I, it seems like there is some people that want it to be bad, but for the most part, no one wants it to be out bad. of anger. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for the most part, people want to have fun when they pick up a game. Exactly. Know? Yeah, Bungie used to show population. Your chat's saying Bungie used to show population online. Yeah, three, three they doesn't. Have, yeah, they haven't. They didn't even that's, do it in Halo Four, did they? That's shifty as hell. You know, like yeah. that just goes to show you the transparency that we're dealing with. You know, it's weird because we we know that Halo Four and Five both did like pretty well in terms of population, and Infinite clearly has as well. So I don't understand why they don't show like population I statistics. Don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, we could say that only ten percent were Steam and less are now, but we don't really have the exact statistic yeah, we, as we, well. Yeah, there isn't like any proof of that. But if Steam was still ten percent, then that would mean there's only like realistically like fifty thousand, sixty thousand people playing the game. But how quick you can still get into matches? Like I can find games on the Yappening or on Big Team Battle in general within thirty seconds. And if there was only fifty thousand people playing the game, I don't think that would be the case, especially considering I live in the UK and I most of the time get on like European servers. So that's why I, I don't think Steam still makes up ten percent. I think Steam is much less than that now, with the vast majority being on Xbox. Yeah, I don't think there's more than, like, 80,000 people in the game, though. I I, it, I would be surprised if there was that little. I think there is more than that. I would say there's probably forty to 70,000. And the reason I say that is, like... It, it's, like... Again, the reason I say that is there's just not that active of a YouTube audience, there's a very, there's a pretty much borderline non-existent Twitch audience. Yeah. It's, uh, there's only a Twitch audience when HCS streams come on. And some of that, a very small portion of that is down to actual interest in HCS, but most of it is because people want the drops. <laughs> yeah. And but whenever they come in to want the drops, you can kind of get an idea of who the loyal fans are. Yeah. And understand the, the actual size of the player base. But it's certainly, if they're having to remove playlists, like that could be a sign. Although it could just be like, ah, it's not worth it because the other ones are more popular. Yeah. But I don't, not a single one of my real life friends are even talking about this game. That's, that's a really telling sign. Yeah. yeah. And I live in America where the servers are best and my friend group grew up on Halo and we do not like it anymore. You know, I like it. I like modern, 
I, I hate Infinite, I'm going to be honest. I enjoy Customs, but I hate this game. Yeah. But MCC, I love, you know. Uh, Halo 5, I played 12 days of. Halo 5, I love. I didn't like it as much as other games, but I loved it. Yeah. Uh, it did, did Reach show population. I know 3 did, I don't know if Reach did. Reach did, so, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes, it would say how many players were in the playlist. The, the only reason I'm asking that is because someone's asked in chat. I, I, yes. I didn't know the answer, so. Um, but yeah, no, it's... Uh, see, I mean, to be fair, considering there's still, like, sometimes... Obviously, there's a few thousand. Sometimes there's tens of thousands of people that still click on the HCS stuff. Depending on what the drop yes. is, usually. If there's a better drop, then more people tune in. But that shows that if, like, people are clicking on just for the drops, and there's still sometimes tens of thousands... Like sometimes they still like want to play it. Yeah, exactly. That and that shows like there's there's still a lot of it. There's still clearly enough interest for that many people to be tuning in just to get a free skin. Which sometimes it's exactly. just one weapon skin, which is why like I th this game there's still clearly a lot of interest in this game. I mean, some people I'm pretty sure get the drops even if they're not playing it right now. Some people probably click on to get the drops, so when they do go back to the game, they have that stuff. Um, I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if that is the case for some people. This is going to be really, ha ha like, hectic, by the way. This is going to be absolutely horrible. Oh, my. See, that just bothers me, though. I want them to be transparent about the player base. That's just... it. Whenever you don't... Whenever you're not open about how many people are in-game, that does spell something ominous, you know? Yeah. Not necessarily, of course. It could be fine. I read from the grave. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, that, that was rude. <laughs> but, uh... I don't know. I don't know. I think they should be open. I think they should say how many people are in game. Yeah. Then we can know. Because as long as they say that, people are gonna assume it's not alive. You know. Yeah, exactly. The father. The thing is, is like the reason so many people do just assume the game is dead is because Steam is the only place you can view the numbers, and on Steam the numbers are really low. So obviously, the common conception is gonna be, well, the game's dead because there's the because on Steam the only place I can view numbers. It's only got 5k, so therefore, game dead. Which isn't... Oh, and not to mention, I forgot to mention, it's only top 16 on Xbox. Yeah. Uh, which is definitely, like, I mean, that's that's by no means great. Um, no. But I am curious to know what, like, the sort of numbers are, because, again, like I say, I, I can still find matches really quickly. Uh, obviously, some playlists, you're bound to find them much slower. Um, but for the most part, I still find matches pretty quickly, so I, I don't think, I do not think the game is dead. Is it on, is it dying? It's certainly yes. not dead. Yeah, like, is, is it no. dying? Absolutely, but that doesn't mean that it's dead. Yeah, that is a good point. I do watch HCS for drops, but watch streamers when play some casual rank. See, it's weird. Like, I enjoy streaming, but I don't really watch many people stream uh, Halo. In fact, I don't watch streams that often in general. I'll watch, like, some people that I actually, like, talk to. If they're, if they're live, I'll tune in for a bit. But um, I guess it doesn't help most, most of the other Halo content creators that I speak to. Uh, I live in different time zones, so when they're live, it's, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, or I'm asleep, so... <laughs> Um, but I, I don't really watch Halo streams, uh, but obviously that's just me. Um, it's weird. Halo, Halo is like, it's a game that, it's like my favorite game to play, but I don't really watch, like, gameplay stuff. I will watch, um, like, commentary stuff. I mean, I've been watching your Iceberg video. I've been watching chunks of it every now and again. Um... And I love watching that sort of stuff, like stuff that's about the lore or about other stuff to do with the game. I love watching that. But when it comes to just gameplay stuff, I don't know why I just find Halo videos like that boring. And it's not even because I dislike watching the game. It's just, I don't know. It's so weird. There's not a whole lot to see that you haven't already done yeah, as well. I, I, th I think that's the just seems to be the case with playing games in general. It's like, why would I watch it when I can just play it? Well, if the gameplay is like really professionally done, like yeah. someone's really good at the game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird, though, because even with, like, the pros, I'll watch it and I'll be like, I don't find this this entertaining. <laughs> I don't find HCS oh, stuff no. entertaining at all. Maybe Neither sometimes do it's down to the personality of the people I watch, though. Maybe I'm just not watching the right people. Oh, yeah. If, if a content creator isn't that entertaining, then you're not going to stick around for the content, even if they are good at the game. Oh, uh, I put up a good fight. i got to go, Mike Pyle. Catch you later, bro. Yeah, she's stopping by, man. What's your estimation? What's the player base numbers? I think it's over 100k. 
Over 100k. I think it's that's... definitely... I mean, considering... Well, on Steam, it was like over 200k, 270k at launch. I would not be surprised if the game is sitting at maybe 300k over across all platforms with Steam make, is... make it about 5k. And I know that might seem like a very high estimate, but I, I would not be surprised if the game is at least like 300k. Like I said, that's like, insane. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think 100k is already kind of pushing it, but that's a very optimistic number. I think uh, it's it's it was the silent majority, isn't it? A lot of people like the, with any game, with every game, the vast majority of people that play it aren't on social media. They're not talking about it. Uh, they might watch videos on YouTube, but that doesn't mean that those people are talking. I mean, um, but the fact compare that, the like Twitch numbers, the YouTube views, you know, how often it's mentioned in the news, you know. Well, if you look at the the YouTube views, I mean, if we talk about like Sean W, when he does his shop videos, there's still how many does he get on them? Let me find the last one. I think uh, the last one was like twenty k. Thirty six k on his last one. That's still thirty six k. 36k and then 41k the one before that that is still 30,000 people that are watching his shop video and even mine still get like 2 to 3k on average some do a lot better than that which if there's still that much interest in just people watching videos of the shop which is really nothing special it shows again that's there's all still, there is there's still that's quite, all there is yeah there. as far as updates go that's the only like frequent flow of content uh, but I think that alone shows there's still, like, considerable interest. Yeah, there could be. But you have to keep in mind as well, multi-viewers, like, if they view them twice. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people that do that. Yeah, yeah. But there's also, uh, sometimes I've seen YouTube views count as, like, you get, like, one view could equal, like, two. Am, am I right in assuming that? Because I've seen, like, the YouTube analytics have told me, you have, uh, let's say, 10,000 views on a video, Nikos, and then they say... However, you have 5,000 unique viewers. What that makes me think is somehow it's counting for each of those 5,000 unique viewers, like two views per person, maybe. I don't I've know. seen that before. I mean, you, I don't know if that's viewers real. Just new people to your channel, isn't it? Whereas, I suppose. Whereas the other 5K, like if you're getting 10K and 5K unique viewers, 5,000 of those people are new people, and the other five are your subs. Or, or they that's don't necessarily, they're not necessarily true. subs, they're just people that watch your videos frequently, because obviously. You have your percentage of people that are subscribed and not subscribed, aren't they, don't you? Let me take a look. Uh, what modes everyone want to do now? It's been good for me. haven't really had any issues, but I don't have Game Pass, which is why I don't use Xbox app. Fair enough. I'd, I would be very surprised if anyone plays this through the, uh, the streaming. But it's still 16th on Xbox. That's what confuses me. It was 20th the other day. I think when Yappening came out, it actually went up by 4. It was 20th? I think That's it was 20th. bad. That's bad, but I... Like, That's what, real. What games are underneath it? We'll get back to playing um, I'm, I'm just curious now. Uh, I yeah, need to go on see. Most store. Most games. Top, top I can tell you. Games. So Fortnite's number 1. Modern Warfare is number 2. Okay, Destiny 2 is number 7. I can't click on the uh, shop on Xbox to view it. So okay. Halo Infinite's still 16. Right below it is Red Dead Redemption 2. And Red Dead's still doing pretty well. And then right under it is Dreamlight Valley. I've never heard of this. Okay. So oh, it is beating out Cod sweet. Vanguard. But that's not a surprise, because Van Van Cod Vanguard is not very popular. I mean, for some reason, when I'm clicking... Well, this is just top three games. Um... But Fortnite, Apex, and games from like seven years ago are demolishing it. It's, it, Which is just it's like wild. Fortnite, I mean, every time they do the, uh, not the seasons, you know, the chapters, that is essentially, that is almost like the game is just re-releasing. Yeah. Because, like, they, they did chapter two and that completely changed the game. That completely changed it. So, so that Halo could be Infinite has like, 5.3. Is it 5.3 right now on Steam? Yeah. 5.3k on Twitch. That's interesting. Let me see if drops are on. This is higher. Uh, there's a part I don't know. of stream going it on. Minute, isn't there? There's an HCS. And that's just an emblem drop or a weapon charm drop. 5,000 people are still tuning in just for a weapon charm. There you go. That's uh. So how many, out of every Halo fan, how many do you think are doing that right now? Out of all the Halo Infinite players. Pardon? Out of all the Halo Infinite players, what percentage do you think are doing that right now? 
would you would you wait for? for for just a charm uh out of the entire population of the game if i'm sticking by my like 300k ish um what would that be i'm not i'm not that great at math it's a pretty low percent if that's the case i again like you have so many people that don't really use twitch um that don't tune in for twitch drops and stuff especially ones that are sort of as kind of mediocre as a weapon charm um so i don't know i think that's like i i do think it is a small percent uh, he's, he's not about a new fortnite season by the way cerulean not a, uh, a new halo season um I don't know. I, I I do think it's a low percentage though. That it's uh, tuning into this one at least. I think it's a low percentage, just because it's it's not one of the big HCS events and it's not a big drop either. I think when you when the uh, they do the commando, the gold, uh, the diamond commando. I think that's going to be a bit more, like maybe seven to ten k. If there's five k tuning right now, that. I think seven to ten k for the commando. But again, like I I know it's not something you necessarily look out for, but how often do you necessarily see people use the diamonds coating? In infinite i know it's not something you're not necessarily going to be looking at what people use on their pistol but i don't see loads of people use the diamond sidekick and that considering that's been probably one of the more popular twitch drops or the twitch drop coatings from the launch like you had their hcs the hcs launch armor coating which was really popular i rarely see anyone use it which is why again even when it come out i rarely see it, saw anyone use it which and those streams were pulling in like 200k um so i think like, it is only a small fraction of people that get the Twitch drops. I mean, I'll have people commenting, like, when I'm using stuff from their Twitch drop, and they'll be like, whoa, how, how, how did you get that? And I was like, well, it was, it was free as a part of this. Um, well, I don't know. We've got 11 people. Do we want to Do we want to carry on doing customs, or should we go back to some we big, get a big battle? team? We want to do some big team. Do you, want to, do you want to try and lock the rest of the yapping stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So, but where could Halo be if it was mainstream? How many, like, let's say it had as many viewers on Twitch and had the public conscious. Everyone was playing Halo. Yeah. Um, what, what, would, what do I think the Twitch numbers would be? I don't even know. Because right now, 5K, let's say that's only 5%. Uh, maybe 1%. The 1% would mean there'd be 500,000. <laughs> well, I do not think there's 500,000 people. No, I, I think even if it was mainstream, like you got to think right now, the Modern Warfare 2 beta has 78K. Apex has 50. Fortnite has 60. Destiny 2 has 20. And I'd argue those four, so COD, Fortnite... Apex, and I would argue Destiny is up there as one of the main uh, live service games. The difference is Destiny is in a bit of a different sense. I know it has PvP, but most people play that for the PvE stuff. Um, so that's probably why not as many people tune into that because it's not as as competitive. Um, obviously, Halo's only sitting at five k right now because it's got a Twitch drop. Um, but like, I I think if it was mainstream. It would probably sit around about forty to fifty k. If it was mainstream, that's what I think its average view account would be on Twitch. Hmm. It was um, it's funny the other the other week, someone messaged me uh, on Twitter, basically telling me that I'll. Uh, it was like you'll never get a girlfriend because you play Halo. Bro, <laughs> my girlfriend was like at my house at the time. We thought it was pretty funny. Uh, That's it, pretty funny. Well, he was saying like it's a dead game. People would rather would rather watch people sleep on Twitch rather than watch Halo. Now the fun, the funny, the funniest part was the fact that he had a split gate profile picture. Uh, this was like Ooh. the day after the day after uh, split gate announced like, hey, we're not updating our game anymore. So at the time when he took the screenshot that he sent me, Halo was at two K, which is which is like not very good. Uh, but I think, like, you know, at the time that he sent that, that was, like, early UK time. No one's watching Twitch at that hour. No one. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, oh, my God. The, the campaign version of the sidekick is so, so godly, man. It's so amazing. It's pretty <laughs> much the Magnum. It is. Um, it's got no bloom. Um, you know what? Let's. I, I want to be as accurate as possible for Halo Infinite. Even if the game... 
I do think a lot of disappointed fans do still play it. Yeah. Not everyone who plays Infinite is going to love it, you know? Yeah, but it's because people, like, can... M most people agree that the gameplay's solid. Even if you, like, a lot of people that don't like the game or don't like the flaws of the game, most people will agree, like, I, I really hate the game, but I will admit the gameplay is solid. Which is why a lot of people still play it because they find the gameplay fun. And first and foremost, that's what a game needs to be. That's what any game needs to be. And if the gameplay is fun then people are going to stick around, even if they are disappointed. People are still going to play it. Um, and there's yes, a lot of features... exactly. There's a lot of features that need to be added to make it more fun. I mean, the skill-based matchmaking is horrible. It is horrible. It's um, horrid. And, like... They need, a, they need to support uh, international players that are outside of the Americas. Yeah. Because, like, people like Mint Blitz and Australians alike... Yeah, you don't have having, to switch, like, 20 minutes for a game, and he's, like, one of the few people that is somehow still positive when it comes to Infinite. Yeah, for he a loves modern the game. game... He loves the game. He's one of the biggest content creators, and he can't even play it. <laughs> for a modern Halo game, or a modern video game in general, to do that is just... It's kind of embarrassing. But it also will definitely indicate that they don't give any they, they, they don't care about the player base enough to do it yeah or maybe there's not enough outside of the u.s is, is that, that more warrants of a three, four, three issue though or is that a microsoft issue because we're talking about servers good question that's, that's, good question that sounds like that, more of a microsoft the servers issue. would be microsoft yeah this this would be a hashtag microsoft azure problem or something like that yeah i think um, that's i think that's a microsoft problem not a 343 problem i don't think there's much that 343 can do that other than say to microsoft hey we kind of you kind of need to have more servers for this region because if people are having that issue with halo infinite that? who knows uh, yeah I, I, you know? i've got no proof but i think that's that's because it runs off of microsoft servers microsoft so like, yeah so i think it's a microsoft problem um it could be. It could be. Like, I mean, what are we talking about with, like, Sea of Thieves? Which would, I'm assuming, run off the same, if not very similar, servers. How's that doing in other regions? Um, I mean, every time I play Sea of Thieves, I never see any players, but apparently the game is doing really well, so... <laughs> Maybe it's just really popular in the States. Yeah. Because I hear a few people over here playing it. But you know what really surprises me, though? So if we could get an as accurate as possible take on the player base, yeah. you know, if we can get as accurate as possible, I think 100k is possible now that you're mentioning it with the Twitch drops. Yeah. But that's not active players. I think that'd be like players who tune in at least once a week. You yeah, know? yeah. It's not necessarily because... people that play in every day. Uh, I was, oh, I was meaning more so active player numbers. Like, you know, when, when Steam charts peaks, I mean, like, whenever all players peak, I would think it'd be, like, 80k. See, so, that's, that's what I'd consider to be, like, 100k, but I, th I think there's, like, maybe, like, 300k sort of regulars that aren't on every day, but I, I still think it's relatively high, because, like I say, we, how long did it take us to get in this game, Joss? It did not take us long at all. No, not and at all. And I know all. this is the event mode, and a lot of people playing it for the cosmetics, but, and uh, I mean, to be fair, a lot of people playing it because it's fun. Um, but even if we went on to some of the other modes, like if we look at the estimated wait times, some of them are going to be over a minute. And again, right now, we've got to sort of factor in, well, some of those, you, it's going to be longer right now because most people play in the events. Like regular big team battle, you're probably going to have to wait a bit longer because everyone's playing yapping playlists. Um, Dude, but... I actually am having fun right now. <laughs> I am having fun. It's a good, it's I a good this game. Yeah, the um, gameplay is solid, and the mode works amazingly. Like, do this more. Like, this is what we've been asking for, you know? But, yeah, I think... Uh, I, I still think the game's doing pretty well. Like I say, if, if, I can find, if I can go on to most modes and still only have to wait, like, between 30 to 50 seconds for it to find a game, then that shows the player count is still doing relatively well, on average as well. The only time where I might struggle a bit more is either if I'm playing really late or really early. <laughs> Um, that they're the only times I have problems, uh, if I want good servers at least. Funnily sure. enough, the only mode I ever had bad servers on was Last Spartan Standing. Every time I'd play it, it'd be 90 to 130 ping. And knowing that that made up such a small fraction, granted to be fair, I only ever played Last Spartan Standing during events, but knowing that made up such a small fraction, that well, that explains why. Because it's like no one playing it in the LSS, UK. LSS was unfortunate. Oh, it's like, it could have been good if custom games, they made it to where you could customize the weapon tiers. 
Yeah, that would have been, no, no, been, been, been a banger. But to be fair, I don't like the weapon tiers as a system. It, it just felt weird that they tried to implement sort of gun game mechanics into a battle royale. Into a, a mode that was like supposed to it. be a battle royale. I, I, yeah, the way that they did it, I just I really don't like. Um, yeah, I get why they did it. They wanted players to not just turtle up and camp all the time because if they fight, they'll get rewards. Yeah, but at the same but, time, uh, it, that in that same instance, it also kind of rewarded camping because people could camp, basically play no risk. Then at the end of the match, they still have five lives left, and they, they've like lost. You know, it'd been really good though. Go on. Make keep the lone wolves update, even though it's a crappy marketing. Although 343 really does need better marketing. That's a quick tangent, yeah, but they really yeah. do need better marketing in commercials. This game could be something. If if it showed that they took the marketing seriously, I very rarely saw anything. I mean, it's not that I watch TV very often, but like, because I don't. But whenever the TV was on, rarely, like, almost never see anything about Halo. And that's not even Plus just with the, the games, YouTube just channel? in general. Oh my, the, the trailers for each event were so bad. <laughs> Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, I will admit, but, uh, yap I mean, Yappening did the teaser and everyone was like, wow, this is awful. Uh, but then they did the actual trailer and he was like, oh, never mind, this is actually good. <laughs> Fair enough, 343. Uh, but all the other trailers, it's just... It, the, the problem is the, the trailers always feel like, feel like they prioritise the cosmetics rather than the events, which... Sure. I mean, yeah, when with the entrenched events or with Tenrai or last spawn stand, the last spawn standing-based events... That makes sense because that's all they had to offer. At least the happening feels like an event. This is the only event that exactly. is like felt like an event. Um, for the most exactly. part, I think season two's events have been worse than season one's, except this. <laughs> yeah, except this. This uh, has been the best event yet. Yeah. I will say one big thing that I will say is that uh, for last part and standing, they should have just made it like this. Picture this. It's four player squads, multi teams, because players want multi teams. It's yeah. four four man squads on a big team map. You got red, blue, orange, and green team, right? Like, multi team has been a staple in Halo until this game, you know? Yeah. Uh, do that, do that, and, and then bear with me. No lives, just a revive feature, right? Yeah. So it's kind of more like a battle royale. They go a bit more in, you know? Mm hmm. Okay, and then that's not all. Do the revive system. Then you can do the weapon tier thing, and then it becomes like a cool squad based like battle royale on a big team map. You know? Yeah. See, that I mean, been at the good. minute, I think the, the best brand new mode that we've had while well, Infinite's been out is Attrition. I think Attrition is actually a good mode. It's like it's Slayer, yeah, but with a live fun. system. Like, it was, it, was a, it was a cool concept, and it was a fun mode, and I, I really it. enjoyed that event. Uh, I don't know why it got removed. I don't know why it got removed. Yeah, it was actually it's, it's really in good. quick play now, though, isn't it? I think they added it back, and now it's a part of quick play. Yeah, but um, it should have been its own playlist. They should have yeah. kept it. It's so weird that they didn't a lot bring of people were playing it. Yeah, it's so weird that they didn't bring it back until season two, though. I found that so odd, considering it was the best. It was the best new mode that this game had had. Uh, and to be fair, that event overall, I thought was like a solid one. Even the cosmetics, even though they weren't the best in the world, I thought they were like pretty cool. Because you had the, the neon visor and the neon mohawk, but of course they were off center for what, like. Oh months. my, yeah. Um, the, 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 they need better QA too. They need quality yeah. assurance to go up. But the the coatings that you could get were pretty cool. The visor, the, the, the that sort of stuff. I thought like it was a, it was a decent event. How much longer are we going to be playing? I have no idea. If I'm being honest, I have no idea. I do got to get some work done here in a bit, but like I'm actually enjoying this. Like yeah. this is a this is a rare Nikos W right now. <laughs> Halo Infinite fun question mark? Yeah. Just because I think it's the worst in the series doesn't mean that it's not fun. Yeah, when, when I ranked... say like Reach is the the worst one, people will, people will be like, uh, like pe people just assume that means I don't like it, which isn't the case. Now to be fair, I do not like in uh, Reach's multiplayer. I think Reach's multiplayer is bad. But it's customs, it's campaign, it's forge, forge world. all that other oh, stuff yeah. is really good. I just think it's multiplayer, which is the thing you play the most. Like multiplayer, that's why the multiplayer needs to be good in a Halo game because it's the thing you play the most. Uh, even if like that isn't the main selling, like for me the main selling point of a Halo game is the campaign. But am I going to be playing the campaign as much as I'm playing the multiplayer? No. Um, but yeah, that's like because Reach's multiplayer is so like I I hate it. I hate it. That is why Reach is my least favorite. Even though I like everything else, the multiplayer. Just because the multiplayer. I thought that was, I thought that was the second best multiplayer in the series. Rad Nico's out. I, I love it. <laughs> okay, okay, more like Tom and Nico's out, bro. I'm, I am destroying right now. Like, 
<laughs> We're both topping the board right now. Are we? Yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> this is a rare, a rare YouTuber W. Okay, okay. Someone just grappled onto me with a with a sword, and it, my game just started like teleporting all over the place. Uh, all over the place. Okay. I guess part of the reason I think it's dead is all of my viewers don't want me to play this game anymore. <laughs> like my my streams of Infinite used to get like thirty nine viewers, forty viewers, and I would I would have fun, and now I get like. Pen. Mine, and I mean, th maybe it's just because I've got a smaller audience, so I'm just sort of, it's it kind of, I guess, easier for me to grow, but, uh, like, I've, my streams have been consistently, for the most part, doing better. Now, you'll have the, the odd one here and there, where it's like, it just does so much better than everything else, but they're sort of, uh, like, it seems like it just sort of gets better and better each week. Um, That's good. That's good. Maybe it's because the player base is coming back right now, and I need to stream Infinite again sometime. I streamed, Who knows? I streamed... Last time I streamed Infinite was in, like, the middle of Season 2 and everything was falling apart, you yeah. know? Yeah, So maybe, maybe it's just how it was for a minute, but I would have people come into my chat and say, like, you're still playing Infinite? Call me when it's a different game. Yeah. You know? Um, well, uh... I, I did a poll the other week and it was like, oh, which one would you prefer to do for the next game night, Master Chief Collection or Infinite? And Master Chief Collection got majority of the votes. I think it was like 60-40 to MCC. Yeah. But then but then overall, as far as player counts and uh, viewers go, me and Infinite Streams performed better and both players like that joined and viewers. So it's like, people want you to play Master Chief Collection, but then they don't tune in or don't play the game when you're on it. And it's like, okay. Yes, yes, I've had that too. I've I've made those polls and like MCC will get less viewers. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can like check check it because it wasn't that long ago. Okay, so it had one point eight k votes, right? Sixty two percent voted MCC, thirty eight percent voted Infinite. And to be fair, although the MCC stream didn't perform poorly by any by any uh my, it didn't necessarily do as well as my Infinite streams. And when I stream Infinite, I get more players. Um. It wasn't necessarily, like, leagues worse in terms of viewers, but I got more players with Infinite. And when I was doing a custom game night, when, like, at one point I was only there with, like, six players, you're a bit limiting in what you can sort of do there. I just got a collat with the shock rifle. That was awesome. I love the shock rifle. Like, it's, like, I, just it's the such best a good gun Halo game. weapon in general. It's like, here's the sniper, but, like, better. Uh, I got DC. Play again next time. Ah, oh, fair enough, man. That's that's unfortunate. I'm always worried I come off as like condescending when I say stuff. <laughs> like I'm not trying to say it like a rude way. Yeah, I don't hear it at all. Sometimes, sometimes someone will like d like get kicked from the game or like get disconnected. And I'll be like, well, that sucks. But I'm not trying to say it in a condescending manner or anything. Yeah. It's like I don't really know what else to respond with. <laughs> I'm on the turret of the wraith. Oh no! Oh no! I hate Infinite Spanker. I think the Infinite version of the Spanker feels so underpowered. So underpowered or yeah, overpowered? It feels underpowered. It does not feel like I'm using a rocket launcher. It feels insanely powerful. I I feel like the complete opposite. I feel like I will shoot. There'll be times where I shoot either like right next to someone, like it's right but underneath them, and they just. Oh, like, that's desync. Sometimes. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that. That's fair. It could be desync. Um. I you think we'll sometimes like turn your rockets and make them disappear. <laughs> like I've had that happen. It's on one of my videos where okay, I was talking about the cyber ops event or whatever. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm like playing Slayer and I shoot two rockets and they both vanish. I'm like, are you serious? And then the enemy team picks up my rocket launcher like it never fired. Oh, I got the Citroen White. Oh, oh. you finally got it. Um, right, is anyone after joining in for the next game? Is anyone is on that wants to join? We'll probably do like we'll rock. We'll run like maybe a couple more, if you've got time. Yo, oh, I've only it got like a from how many white. Left? Nine challenges left, and then I'll get the ultimate reward. Well, ten, I guess, if you count the ultimate challenge. I don't know if I'm gonna bother for this week's. It's okay. It looks nicer in the preview image than it actually does.
There's been so many times where I'm like, I'm not going to bother for this week's ultimate reward, and then I just kind of unlock it, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Everyone do Pepsi. Ah, uh, I just don't like the Pepsi coating. Maybe it's just the viewers I have don't like Halo Infinite because I've made some like critical videos of it. Yeah, I guess you you sort of uh, bound to draw that crowd, aren't you? Like, if a lot of if, if, if yeah. a lot of your content is more critical, I mean, I feel like I make a nice balance of both critical and uh, both critical and positive content. Uh, I feel like I, last... I do a good blend of both. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't done a critical Halo Infinite video in a long time. The last one was three months ago, but it's so popular. It's got yeah. like 200k views. Yeah, that's your, uh, um... the, the disaster, what yeah, went wrong yeah, video. Yeah. yeah. It, I was actually legitimately making that video because I wanted to know what went wrong. Yeah. And uh, it's even, it's not even, aside from the th thumbnail and title, it's a pretty unbiased look into it. Yeah. Yeah, you like tell me about this the other week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, uh, I'm thinking that maybe a lot of the people subscribe because they're like, I agree. Yeah. You know? The only reason uh, I'm, I'm laughing is because I'm just remembering what you said about that, that person that said <laughs> that you're the reason you killed the game or something like that. Yeah, someone was like, I killed the game. And I'm like, yep, it was that's me. me. Um, All along. But yeah, I think, like, if you, if you're sort of more critical of the game, even if it's not necessarily in a negative way, you're sort of more, you're more likely to draw in that crowd. crowd. That's that. That's the type of audience you're then going to create. So then, if you are sort of talking about the game in a positive way, you're going to have uh, sort of a fluctuation of people. Or if you're just talking about it in a neutral way, you're just going to have sort of that like bigger uh, influx of people that are, like that just don't obviously don't like the game or look at it in a more critical manner. I mean, For even sure. though even though a lot of my content, I would say, uh, yeah, there's a good portion that leans to a more positive side. There's a good portion that's neutral, and there is some that is more negative. Um, no matter what, you're still bound to get negative comments. It's like, uh, I literally made a video where it was like, the new Halo Infinite Battle Pass sounds amazing, uh, which is just talking about the free pass, because it's 30 tiers of free stuff that was cut from Season 1. It's all completely free, and it's good armor. It is good good armor i like cosmetics a lot I'm of my channel it, yeah. is based around talking about cosmetics um just because that's what i enjoy talking about that sort of stuff customization is a big thing for me and it is for a lot of other people um mm -hmm. but you had so, i had so many comments on that where it was just like people that were obviously rightfully angry at 343 but i feel like some of them kind of take it too far to, to a point where it seems like they were they were angry at me because i like cosmetics in the video game because <laughs> you're the problem you're the reason it's gonna be yeah. bad because you're supporting their terrible yeah game. that's that's what um, a lot of it was it's like <laughs> it's like oh well people like you are the problem um because because you're still playing the game and you still support 343 that shows them they can carry on doing it which isn't the case like i'm just talking about one of the positive things that came with the roadmap because everyone else had already spoke about the roadmap in a negative light or well um like a lot of people had just sort of spoke about how they felt with it uh, and th that's all yes. I did. I just spoke about a different part. I felt like I didn't need to make a video where I was telling everyone how bad the roadmap is because everyone had already done that. What, what yeah, and everyone has already been that? super negative about the game in general, you know? Yeah. So I did not see the point of needing to essentially just repeat what every other content creator on the planet had said. <laughs> so Exactly. I just, exactly. I, that's why I don't make, like, news videos yeah. often. Or I don't, uh, I don't make very negative videos. I may, like, be pretty scathing in my opinions... But, like, I'll be fair where I can be fair, yeah. you know? I've always been that way. That's, like, that's why all, all I did was pinpoint one part of the roadmap. All I did was speak about the 30 tier battle pass with the winter update and just spoke about why I think it's a good thing. And then I made another video essentially talking about how, like, I believe Season 3 is going to be this soft relaunch that everyone was asking for. Um, and obviously, you, get, you I mean, I knew I was going to get negative comments on both of those. I knew it was bound to happen. Um... I mean, one off end up getting it over like 10k, which is pretty big for me. Uh, and I was, I guess, part of me wasn't expecting That's it to really be good. that negative. Like, it, 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 to be fair, I say this: it, it is my like most disliked video by like it's like 75% of likes and 25% of dislikes, which is my my most disliked video. But when I saw that 75% of people are still liking it and still essentially agreeing with me, it's like okay. It's just the louder majority then. The people that are complaining are obviously the louder ones. They're the ones leaving the comments, but most people are just leaving a like because they sort of probably agree with what I'm saying or enjoy the content at least. Um, 
And it's like, I, no point in that video was I defending 343. In fact, I'm pretty sure I opened it up by saying, like, I am also disappointed in the roadmap, but here is one thing that I think is cool about it. And everyone was just like, you're such a shell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I know it's 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 That's interesting rough. to sort of see how people can be, because um, like mm. it, it sometimes it does feel like the, the more mad at the content creators than the are of people. I mean, I imagine you've seen some of the people on Twitter that try and make out as if like all content creators that uh, that cover Halo are bad, and it's like oh yeah, how <laughs> I don't like the overly positive ones though because they're overlooking every issue. Yeah, you you literally you sort of have people within both genres you have some people that are like just negative about everything like they hate the game no matter what uh, and they won't we even still need to do that alignment thing yeah you should align yeah, yeah we them. really do we really do um but then you do have people that are like yeah overly positive and they are equally as bad they are equally as unhealthy to the um to the the game as people that are overly negative people that are overly positive are just as like unhealthy for the game Plus, I've seen some of those overly positive creators, and I'm not going to name names, but they've started drama on Twitter and started some pretty horrendous stuff yeah. and beef. And I'm like, uh, in an attempt to like gain views yeah. or something, and I'm like, this is so disgusting. Like, I've seen character assassination attempts of like bigger Halo YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. And, like, been a lot of that recently. A There's lot, been a lot of that, that recently. Was, that was depraved. They were like attacking one of the greatest community members who was very level-headed and wanted the game to succeed and uh, did so much for the Halo community, they were attacking them because when they said critical thing about Infinite. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, are you serious? Like, but then you can say the same about people who attack the overly positive Yeah, YouTubers, it's, you know? it literally it goes both ways, which it's like... There, there is clearly a, a good... I mean, if anything, it is the majority of Halo fans that are, like, just, just really good people. They, they want they want the game to succeed. The, the majority uh, of people typically are, yes. You have, like, a good... Like, it's usually the loud minorities. Yeah. It's, uh... You have so many, like, members of the Halo community that are so, like, talented. Like, wh whether that be through because of uh, Forge or, like, just artists and stuff. There's so many people that, like, you see on Twitter that draw Halo art and crap like that that are so talented. Mm -hmm. um and it's like it's such a talented and caring community but then because you have those like two loud groups of people even if they're a smaller group like you have the ones that that like suck off 343 or suck off everything halo related no matter what um yeah. <laughs> and then you have the people that like just hate them like no matter what it's uh and both both sides it's like get a grip guys <laughs> please yeah. definitely definitely I'm where I'm at. I just basically moral of the story is uninstall Twitter unless you're a content creator. You don't need it. Yeah, you really there's don't. a lot of toxic it's, people on yeah. it. Yeah, and even I mean, I, there's been quite a few content creators at the minute that like um, that have basically sort of been like, I need to uninstall Twitter because I cannot handle this at the minute. Yeah, like, you, you know what I don't think is. No oh, go on. Uh, I, I don't think this is smart. When people voice their opinions, when they're very vitriol and they try to attack people, or they say something legitimately, like, really, really inappropriate, that stuff sticks there, yeah. you know? I don't think they realize that what they're doing, in a sense, is, in a way, they could be dooming one of their future, like, career prospects. Yeah. And if they're young, like, they could be boning it, like, really early. Yeah. And I think people really need to be careful what they put out there, you know? Well, it's, uh, I mean, you can put your opinion out there, but don't start attacking people and say like yeah. really offensive stuff. You it, know, it's like I I'll uh, put out a tweet. I mean, I put one out recently where it was like, guys, I have a confession. I love Halo Infinite. Um, oh yeah, I heard it that yeah, one. and that got quite a bit of attention, which was like quite surprising because it was like it was just I just want I just wanted an excuse to post some screenshots that I took. <laughs> That's all it was. Um, <laughs> and then that tweet ended up getting a bit of attention, uh, and a lot of that, to be fair, was just people saying like, oh, me too. Uh, but then you had some comments where it was like people that seemed angry that I'm enjoying the game and it's like oh so you have no taste or uh, like oh the, the game's bad stop liking bad games um, and it's just like why do you care <laughs> um, and then you just have people that are just so overly negative and it's like man this this is just clearly not the space for you uh, but but people, yeah. people will then assume that I'm overly positive but you can scroll down on my Twitter for just a few seconds and you'll see me tweeting about like how I think the challenge system is the worst thing ever. <laughs> like, yeah, people thought people thought I was like a Halo Infinite hater and I'm like, 
what? Like they left here. You are playing the game. Like disaster. Yeah, they left comments on my disaster videos saying, "Oh, you do is make negative videos. You're just like the rest of them. You toxic. You t you're trying to kill him. You you hit." And I'm like, dude, ninety percent of my most viewed videos are all positive tier lists. Yeah. Modding videos. They're all related to Halo and having fun on it. I'm like, you clearly don't understand. Like, I've replied with that kind of stuff, and they never have a response to that. Yeah. Because it's like, duh. You know, I had on on that post going back to the the post like I someone said like uh, that they don't like Infinite due to all the plot holes and stuff and I was I just asked out of curiosity what what would you consider the plot holes to be and then someone else replied and one of the things that he considered a plot hole was the lack of the flood being in the game wouldn't really consider that plot hole. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's not really. And it was like that's definitely an L take. I was like, the flood need to be in the game. I was like, the the flood really are not necessary for Infinite Story. And if anything, because it, like with the way the Infinite Story went, there was no room for the flood to fit in. It wouldn't make sense for the flood to be an Infinite Story. Uh, I'm not saying there's no room for them to come into it in the future. And quite frankly, I would love to see the flood return. But right now, uh, like what what Infinite Story was. The flood not being there is not a plot hole because they weren't necessary for the char for the characters or for the story's progression. It wouldn't have made any sense. Um, and uh, like he also mentioned stuff to do with the endless and with Atriox. He was like, "Oh, Atriox wasn't in the game at all," which also wasn't true. Uh, and with uh, the endless, and it was uh, like, "Well, no, that he should have been. He should have been the final boss." I well, you don't have to kill yeah, him. He yeah. can escape. The problem is like as cool as Eshram is. Well, to some people, I think he's kind of lame, but I I, to, I love as Ashram, cool as he is. But I think... yeah, and that's that's fine. But like when you see Atriox in the beginning, that's the guy you gotta fight. Like yeah, everyone yeah. was hyped to fight him. They were like, "Shit, he beat the chief. I want to go beat him up." And then he just vanishes and gets announced to be killed off screen. We don't see it. Well, he's not dead we, though, is he? Like I didn't even just... know he was dead until they said he was dead. And then he comes back in the legendary cutscene. Well, no, he's, he's in that regardless. Gonna... The legendary cutscene is just extra audio, so he's he like he's he like that was everyone gets that cutscene. It's just the uh, the the like forerunners that are talking. That's the legendary ending. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you see uh you see him in that ending, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's the problem is that three four three needs to understand the storytelling of show don't tell. You know, yeah. we should watch Atriox get quote unquote killed because when if players are confused at any point in the story. The story has definitely kind of messed up, you know? But, I see where they complain about the whole Atriox thing, though. I, I get it, but at the same time, all that is explained during the game. Like, all of that is explained during the game. You have the uh, the bits where you're going through the Forerunner facilities and you have the Echoes, where it's explaining the stuff between Atriox and Cortana. And I liked it because it set up a lot of mystery. Um, oh, I only died once that game? What the hell? Uh, it set up a lot of mystery, which is one thing that I really appreciated. And, and I wouldn't consider any of that stuff being a plot hole because it was all explained during the game. We find out why Atrox yeah, is yeah, presumed it's not dead. A plot hole, um, but is the you better don't realize he's dead it? until probably too late in the plot because it got everyone's hypes up, their yeah, hopes yeah. up to like fight him. And then they found out way too late, I think. But it is implied, like, right at the beginning, like, with Eshram talking, he's, like, saying, like, will honor his will and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I think Eshram should have been the end boss and the Harbinger shouldn't have been killed. I, I, don't, I, I don't know why that... I don't know why the Harbinger was even in the game. The, yeah, the Harbinger, she felt like one of the... Oh, so just a quick side note. Right now, the estimated wait time for Yappening is 19 seconds, which is nothing. <laughs> that's, so That's really good, yeah. honestly. Um... You still need one more. Yeah, if you want to hop on, uh, shoot me a message on Xbox. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't consider... I don't think there was anything in Infinite Story that I would consider a plot hole. Yes, there's some things that I would say need to be explained as in, like, where are Fire Team Osiris? We know where Blue Team are because of audio logs, but where's Lasky? But are those really plot holes when it's stuff to do with past games and just characters not being present? I wouldn't consider that a plot hole for Infinite Story. Um... Yeah, but it is it is a, an oddity. To it's an oddity, but I wouldn't have them just finish. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's it's simply because the route they wanted to take for Infinite was a more personal story for the Master Chief, like with Halo Four. It wasn't necessarily as grand a scale. They wanted to tell a much more personal story, and I kind of appreciate that. Um, but it still had some parts that felt like pretty grand scale. Now it's like with with Atrox and the the Endless. Yeah, not necessarily much to do with them has been developed yet. But that's because they, they want to develop the story. It's like this person was talking about Infinite having plot holes, or I was saying, well, things things that are left unfinished intentionally because they are a part of a cliffhanger. That is not a plot hole. That is intentional. That is to build up future stories. 
uh, and he started talking about Halo 2, and I was like, it's funny that you bring Halo 2 up, considering half the... Ca well, he was talking about, like, co content and how, um... Atriox and the Endless are supposedly cut content and their stories were cut from the game. Uh, and then he started talking about Halo 2 and I was like, well, that's funny considering half of Halo 2 was never meant to exist. Well, the, the other half of Halo 2 never ended up existing. It, like, it, Halo 3 wasn't meant to be a game, but they ended Halo 2 on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, I always, I always, well, I found that really funny that he, he decided to bring up Halo 2 as an arguing point when really it just kind of goes against what he's saying. Um... He was saying, like, everyone loved Halo 2's cliffhanger ending, which, from what I understand, most people don't. Uh, I love it. I thought it was really cool. But from what I understand, a lot of people were really annoyed at the cliffhanger ending. Even Bungie were annoyed at the cliffhanger ending. So I think that tells you everything you need to know there. Um, mm. But, yeah, I, I definitely... Uh, I, I think people that say that Infinite's campaign, like, having plot holes, don't really understand what a plot hole means. Yeah, I mean... I don't have an exact definition for a plot hole. Those, I guess, are just more plot confusion. Yeah. Where they don't... Like, having... Yeah, it's in the game, it's in the audio logs, but they should... For certain things, like Atriox being dead, I feel like showing him in a cutscene one second and then just having him vanish all of a sudden was a little yeah, a that, little odd. That was odd, but it's like... It, it, like, say, it's, uh, it's setting up that sort of mystery. I mean, if you think about it, Breath of the Wild does a very similar thing. You wake up to this desolate version of Hyrule and you find out about the stories you're sort of going around, which, like, I mean, and everyone loves it in Breath of the Wild. Obviously, Halo isn't well, like this element. Well, that's done well um, because, like, it's different. It's like, a, I guess it's more so a character, so it has a larger weight on the plot. Like, the setting, the setting can have anything happen to it. Like, Halo drops you into a broken ring and you know it's broken just by looking at it, you know? Yeah. But you don't know why until the end, and that's fine, you know, because yeah. it doesn't matter like that. But when your main goal is to kill bad guy Atriox, and you don't know where he went, he just vanishes. Yeah. After seeing him appear is weird. That's like if you landed on the Halo ring, you saw it was broken from orbit, and you arrived and it wasn't broken at all. That'd be a little confusing. I would have, I mean, to be fair, one thing that I think would have been really good is if you if they opened the game if the game literally starts with you fighting Atriox like you the player fighting Atriox then that cutscene playing out where like you beat Chief like so you have a whole cutscene where it's characters on the Infinity talking walking around and stuff then all of a sudden the Dreadnoughts hit then you it yes. goes over to Chief he's fighting Banished then Atriox comes along so at this point the cutscene's probably already been on for a couple minutes like it maybe it's like a long cutscene then you have to fight Atriox you get beat. And then the cutscene has it like shows you then like Aatrox beating you, and then Aatrox disappears for the rest of the game. And then they have that mystery play out that the game has. But fighting Aatrox at the beginning, I think, would satisfy a lot of players. Even if you lose, it would satisfy yes. a lot of players. Um, so it's like. I think it would have been cool if you did that. Like if you fought the Infinity as a villain. Yeah. That would also, also, that would be great to show how powerful the Banished are because. Yeah. The only time they effectively beat anything is during, like, the cutscene. Yeah. You know, the reason the Covenant are so terrifying in Halo Reach is you, you play through the missions as they're just tearing everything apart, yeah. you know? You you witness it firsthand. Yeah, yeah. Which, you, that happens in Halo Wars too, but that never felt the same in Infinite because you don't see it. But, um... It's, it's like I said, I don't... I, I wouldn't consider like any of that the stuff to do with the stuff to do with Cortana and with Atriox and the Endless well not necessarily the Endless but that's because that's for future stories but the stuff with Atriox and Cortana that is all explained in game yeah it's not all explained instantly but then that would just be exposition and people wouldn't like that because it would just be exposition um yeah. also this 20 second late wait time was strange yeah it's not just 20 seconds. not true i guess <laughs> Well, so, no, because I think it was earlier. It was earlier. We found a game. It's just everyone's loading. I think it'll be people that are on like weaker PCs or Xbox Ones and stuff. Maybe that's true. We have. Yeah, we've already found the players. We're technically in the in the lobby. We just aren't in the game yet. So we we found it's the tragic. match within twenty seconds. Um. But yeah, like I, I mean, I I don't think Infinite Story is perfect by any means. Uh, but. I, I love it. I think it does a lot of stuff really well. And I think a lot of people, because 
they're not happy with the state the game's in, just sort of write it off as bad. And then people will try and make up stuff like there's plot holes when that... St I mean, frankly, just isn't true. I mean, we've, we've already spoke about that now. It's it's not a plot hole because it, it gets explained. It's like uh, the stuff right. with Cortana. Some people question um, why Cortana changes her mind. And I think the, the difference is Cortana never really did change her mind. She wanted to control the galaxy, whereas Aatrox and the Banished, because of what she did to them... Uh, they wanted to destroy it and they put the only person that she cares about at risk, the only person she has ever cared about is Chief and they essentially put him at risk, so at that point she that's that's why she changes her mind because she never wants, she didn't want to kill Chief, that was never a goal in Halo 5 she didn't want to destroy humanity, she didn't yeah. want to destroy anyone, she wanted control she wanted order, which the Banished go against entirely which is why she changes her mind. And that isn't explained in a book or through audio logs. That is shown yeah, in you the, see game. the game. And, and it explains it. Yeah. I didn't see that as a bad... Like, when I understood that, it was like she cared about Chief. Yeah. She realized she lost because he showed up. So she decided, if I can't keep Chief safe by, like, protecting him, and now the Banished are going to be a bigger threat, I need to do what I can to delay them here so the Chief can survive. Or at least... She could have thought the chief was dead yeah. or was wounded or whatever. So it was probably like, I'm going to get revenge for you killing chief, you know? So, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I would not consider uh, any of that to be a plot hole. Um, yeah, I do think things, there's some things that could have been fleshed out a bit more, which I would have really appreciated um, because I want more from Infinite Story. It's like as simple as that. Uh, but that doesn't mean I think what's there was bad. In fact, I think it was like really well done. Okay, I guess uh, huh. the problem was it. Yep. That's unfortunate. This has happened. This has happened before. Uh, it's, let me just catch up on chat a sec. Uh, catch up on chat a sec. I think the Banished are extremely unintimidating as villains, at least in the main game. Yeah, they, they definitely were an infinite. In Halo Wars, that's not true, though. I really hate how the Yeah, they, they could have the done elites. way better on making the Banished seem not just like the Covenant. Well, the Brutes replaced the Elites in Halo 2. That, that's, like, been the case for years now. The, the elite. I mean, obviously, they kind of made the elites the main villains again in Reach Four and Five, but the brutes replaced the elites in Halo Two and Three, and then they just went yes. back to that for Infinite. Yes, but uh, I think that the Banish doesn't have enough personality. They just feel like they're just the Covenant again. In, in Infinite, I do think there. that was definitely uh, kind of the case for some aspects. Yeah, um, although the brute armor like chipping off as you fight them and some of the weirder units like the brute chargers yeah, and all that made sense. The suicide grunts make zero sense because they, why would the banish do that? Yeah, like the grunts would have committed suicide for a faith like it was in the Covenant. Well, you know? then you also still have, have, I know obviously it's an RTS game, but you still have suicide grunts in Halo Wars. Yeah, but I can forgive Halo Wars because, you know... It's, on, uh, I think it's just one of them, because the Banish technically has different splinter factions within it, like, a lot of them have different morals, and they're run by different people, um, they're just all, like, sort of connected by Aatrox, and because Aatrox was supposedly dead for six months, the Banished were sort of messed up even more in terms of their, uh, sort of leadership, the only thing that made them not feel like the Banished, uh, for me, was definitely just down to the armor, most of them not wearing Banished looking armor, some of them did, but a lot of them it was just, kind of, just the typical blues and purples of the covenant war which was kind of odd um, yeah that was really weird i mean i guess they could have salvaged the armor yeah like you would it, think they would have like colored them it does it makes little... sense for the banished to be using those armors because they are scavengers they take they take stuff and just use it as their own but like at the same time uh yeah same wish they had more covenants and flood yeah the, i mean i love the flood but they weren't necessary for an infinite story i would love to see them come back but they don't need to yet I want to see a flood-based Halo horror survival game. Yeah, 100%. Like a thriller. That'd be terrifying. But you gotta, like, de-limb them like you're in dead space. Bringing them back. Or you're, like, oh. you're just, like, a marine. Yeah, that'd be sick. Uh, bringing them back in a mainline game is just kind of cheap IMO. That I don't find true. Um, I mean, Zeta Halo has such a rich history. It is, like, it is so interconnected with the flood that Zeta Halo is the perfect place for the story, it felt like the flood should have come back. If the flood, if the flood are gonna come back, it should be on Zeta Halo. It's the perfect place for it. It's so. I don't know why we didn't see the Palace of Pain too. Yeah, I think it's something that we probably will see eventually, but we we've literally only seen a small fraction of the ring, uh, and I think but future I feel like DLC that could we're gonna be, see uh, more of it. But that could be potentially graphic. Yeah. Which, which is 
The Halo universe is really dark yeah. when you think about it. I would smash Grave Mag. Excuse me? Uh, I also hope we see some human enemies in the Excuse banished. Excuse me? I would... Yeah, I, I've seen a spot... Like, imagine fighting a Spartan that is working with the Banished. That is defected and is cool. working with the Banished. That would be such a good boss fight. Someone that is basically, like, parallel to Chief. And to, obviously, he's not going to be anywhere near as strong as Chief. Or as cool as Chief. But, like, in terms of gear, like, give them a grapple shot or a repulsor or something like that. In fact, we never saw the repulsor in the campaign, so we have this enemy Spartan that is using a repulsor. You kill him, you get the you take the repulsor off it. him. Do you know how cool that would be? Yeah. If they did that, and like it, you'd be it. using similar weapons to you and stuff like that, and it would. I mean, that there mechanically already exists because you already have like bot boot camp. Uh, we have bots in the multiplayer. You just need to sort of expand on that AI a little bit more to make it better for a boss fight for something in the campaign. But th there doesn't need to be loads of work done for that, which I think is pretty cool. And something that we could definitely see. Um, I hope we see more stuff like Goliaths from Halo Wars 2. Yeah, some more banished Halo Wars 2 enemies, like a uh, Hunter Captain or a Hunter Goliath or uh, like a Locust as a boss fight would be cool. Also, we see some... Oh, right, I already read that one. I'm just rereading stuff now. Ab absolute brain rot. Uh, but yeah, like, considering it's the Banished that are the villains, we didn't see loads of the Banished stuff, which is disappointing. Uh, I still think, like, I, I loved having the Banished in the game. Um, I, I love Eshram. I love a lot of the stuff the Banished does in the game. And I, stu I do think... Um, I honestly might prefer the Banished over the Covenant. I think Aatrox, even though we haven't seen loads of him, is probably my favourite Halo antagonist. Um, I did enjoy. I did enjoy the fact that we had the same Covenant enemies, but they're totally changed. Like, and, and you even had new ones. So that was unfortunate. We were trying to hitch right on this boss. <laughs> um, you saw that happen. Yeah, yeah, I was still on top. Oh, yeah, of it. you were on, and I'm watching the stream. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's like a, a lot of the uh, the things within the Banished. They were technically like the same things that the Covenant had, but with a different. But there was a lot of new. But there was a lot of new stuff like, too. Like the, the the brute berserkers were cool. The brute berserkers, uh, the normal brute enemies were different because they had the armor plates that you had to shoot yeah, off. Yeah. Um. The really shielded brutes as well, and the bosses. So like it did yeah. feel different. Yeah. Like a lot of the fights did. The feel spawn like, killers. I were actually cool like the concept. bosses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like the only a lot the only the campaign had some good features. The only boss fight that I don't think was very uh, was very good was the High Pierce and Torvus one, but I think that's because they didn't feel like a boss fight in the same way that all the others did. They were more like fighting a HVT. Yeah, they were like two um, at once. Uh, it wasn't even the two at once. I think that, like obviously you fire them in the open world, which isn't necessarily a problem, but it, it also didn't help that you didn't know them as characters. Every other boss was shown in cutscenes that they weren't. You you speak to high well high period speaks to you. You hear it for over one the radio. Second over the radio and that's it you don't know yeah. them as characters even even though you don't see loads of jager you see enough of him to sort of understand him a bit, a bit more as a character um so like you his boss fight was cool eshram you get to sort of know him throughout the game even even uh Tremonius, you see him in a cutscene before you fight him hyperius yeah. and Tor uh, not torvus torvus is one of the other ones i think uh hyperius and or is it torvus Whatever his name is, I don't care. He's not important, and that's that's the problem. They weren't important. <laughs> they just weren't yeah. important. Like I did not care for them as characters. I thought they were cool design wise. Basses, you mean? Well, the high hammer people. dude. No, not basses. Basses were cool. Oh, we, you, well, you see basses in a boss fight cutscene. You don't see him before the boss fight, but yeah. no, I mean, I mean the one you fight with Hyperius, his brother. Cause you fight yeah. two at once, don't you? Who, whoever his brother is, I always forget his name, but I, I really don't care. Hyperius and uh, I don't remember. <laughs> exactly, he's so unimportant. Hyperius is easier to remember because one, he has the better design, uh, and two, he he's the one you uh, that actually talks to you, even if it's only for a split second. That split second already makes him more memorable. The bros. Uh, They're so a like pain on legendary. Oh, uh, mate, on the plasma pistol run. It wasn't even that they were hard because they were like actually difficult. It was just because I kept running out of ammo. So I would have to leave the area to find more plasma pistol ammo, which would reset the health bar. I killed How do you one even of beat them. It? Pardon? How do you even beat it then? Um, so I wasn't allowed to throw fusion coils, but I could shoot fusion coils. So basically what I had to do was stack a load of fusion coils, wait for them to come close enough, shoot them, 
which would deal a load oh of his health my. without using much ammo. Uh, there was only one scenario in the game where I... Because, like, I, I basically, uh, like, for the rules, it was like I can melee if I have no other option. The only time I ever had to melee was you have to fight two brute chieftains in a room. They both have white armor. Uh, it's straight after you find out one of the spawns has died. You have to fight two brute oh, chieftains in this room. Like... Uh, and I ran out of ammo completely. So, and there was no ammo drops in that room, so I had to melee those brutes to kill them. That was the only part in the how game. How did you even... What, how did I melee kill them? How did you pull that off? I'm just really good at the game, I guess. <laughs> when it comes to the campaign, when it comes to the campaign. Um, but yeah, like, I, I had to melee kill them. I think I managed to do most of their health with the plasma pistol. In fact, I might have killed one of them with the plasma pistol. I think it was just the other one that I had to melee kill. Uh, so I just I just ran up to him and started throwing hands. Um, I mean, there was a couple of accidental melee kills here and there, which sometimes like I would restart my save, even though I didn't technically need to, because like melee wasn't entirely against the rules, but it just felt wrong to do so. Yeah. Um, but I I literally beat like probably about ninety percent of the game with with melee it, with a plasma pistol. Well, wait, it was way more than that. It was probably like. 99.8 percent <laughs> uh there was just like two instances where i had to melee <sighs> i gotta get some stuff done it was yeah, good streaming I, though yeah i think i'm gonna call it there anyway uh so thank you everyone that come to watch thank you everyone that hopped in thank you nikos for for joining us today it's been very fun anytime it was uh, pretty cool i I've, I've enjoyed it even though like custom games kind of brokey for for a little bit there that, that was <laughs> uh that was unfortunate but other than that, it's been good. Oh, the, the estimated wait time now for Yappening is seven seconds. Whoa. So, again, I I just don't... I mean, even normal big team battles, 33. Bot boot camp is apparently four. That's kind of odd. Four seconds for bot boot camp. But then again, I guess you don't need to search for an enemy team for that. Team yeah, Slayer, you just need 30. you. Tactical Slayer is a bit of a long one. That's one minute 30. Fiesta is 37 seconds. One Ranked minute 30. Ooh. That's just for SWAT, though. Every other one is under a minute. Every other mode is under a minute except SWAT. Even Team Snipers, even Land Grab, every other mode is under a minute. So it's it's like, I, I don't think this game's dead. I really don't. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, thank you everyone for watching.